and we're live. Welcome, everybody. It's Wednesday evening. Some of us are in a basement. Two of us are in a basement. One of us doesn't look like Sam. Special guest racer Joe here tonight. Sam will be joining us, I think. Round of applause for Joe. Yeah, um, thank you. <laughs> and we'll, uh, we thought we'd invite Joe along tonight. We weren't sure if Alex was going to make it, but uh, we brought Joe off from AAA to pinch hit. So hopefully we'll have five people on tonight to to chat about uh, some things. Probably Hello, Richard. Sick. How you doing, sir? Good old Richard. Right off the Y'all have to You sound terrible, my friend. I feel like uh, 10 pounds of shit in a five-pound bag. <laughs> That's not what you want. No, I have I have the dreaded man cold. What does that mean? It's it's well, you know, you've had a man cold before. It's the only thing on earth worse than you know giving birth. Yeah, he's a man and he has a cold. That's a man cold, <laughs> right? So, <coughs> it's all my lungs and my voices. Is it is it the is it the kid's fault? Oh, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah probably. Yeah. Sure. So I have I have my uh, I have my sexy phone sex voice tonight. I, I kind of like that. Come, uh, yeah. Can we can we do that all night? Like, oh, we absolutely can, baby. Baby girl. Oh, look at the time. <laughs> how how long are we here for? Alex just went from six <laughs> to midnight. Joe, Joe's <laughs> yeah. Good evening, uh, FBA, and everyone's favorite vaginal. I just uh, love that name. That's fantastic. Right. You are always right on time, vaginal. Don't you worry about that. Absolutely. <clears throat> I think we should do like 20 questions with vaginal to see if we can narrow down if that is like, someone we know from the That's who. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking it's a record enthusiast in Virginia, vaginal. Or maybe Good it's people. someone who just likes the know, two of them combined. Maybe. <laughs> I can't blame them. Who wouldn't, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Are we going to take an over under on how late Sam's going to be tonight? Oh, I'm guessing another thirty seconds. I'm going, I'm going to say seconds. I'm going to say nine minutes after eight. Okay, I'll say five oh three, five oh four, or well, four minutes after eight. All right. I'll go. I guess I'll go oh seven. All right. Just because. What do you got, Alex? Yeah, I, I think uh, I think he'll be here soon here you said 30 seconds rob but i'll take i'll take that i'll take that bet all right no jason said 30 seconds somebody <laughs> said 30 seconds i mean there's no prize but you know other yeah. than bragging rights which no one cares about so you know I, I i forget all the time jason that you are three hours behind us and i guess joe you're two hours behind us like you know when i get off this stream i'm like yeah i guess it's time for bed you know all that kind of thing but for you it's like you get off the stream after <laughs> chugging beers and you're like, I guess I'll go make dinner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I've made yet. dinner. I'm, I've I'm made for dinner and I'll reheat it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You go boil some loins over there or something. So <laughs> just go. Out. He'll go out to the shed and he'll take part of that smoked uh, grizzly bear meat that he slaughtered by hand. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know what I found out? Speaking of grizzly bear meat, I um, Good as one think, often does. I'm uh, like, okay. taking a trip <laughs> next. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm, I have a kind of like a big annoying work trip from like Saturday to Wednesday next week. And, um, like just kind of going like one city to another, like all just a bunch Boom. of like one way trips. So there he is. Clips um, his toenails. Uh, I hate Very it. Nice. <laughs> Whoa, what, Sam, what you drinking? One of the highest quality. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that's not a leftover, man. No, it's, this is high quality grease, you know. Sir. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway so one of the cities i'm hitting is uh salt lake city and i've, I've never been to salt lake city and i, I like you know jason you and i've talked about this like I, I like outdoorsy stuff i like hiking i like doing those things and so i have like a day ish uh to go and do some stuff there so I'm, I'm planning that out or whatever but i was looking at one of the local like parks with a lot of wildlife and all that kind of stuff and uh it it, it was sure to remind me <laughs> But I guess teach me that at least in the U.S. So I would probably assume up where you are specifically, Jason, and maybe Joe too. I don't know how good I am with this sort of thing. That moose are responsible 
for a significant amount more of human injuries than bears are. Um, yeah. And and my thing is, and I don't really count deer because like deer cause injuries because people hit them with their cars. But I'm talking like moose attack people sometimes, especially if you oh, yeah. out, you know if you get after them, they will come and bust a feather on you. So I um elk, I think elk's that's a big one, yeah. Yeah, especially yeah. if it's mom, especially if it's a mom and little <laughs> ones, right? I mean, like anything, much more at that point. But uh, yeah, I, I just you know I look at them and I'm like, that moose need a baby daddy, you know, and they don't like that, you know. Nobody <laughs> likes that. I just try to be good, and yeah, it's all. Yeah, the moose does not need a baby daddy. Sam, how are we? I'm I'm wonderful. I uh, I'm wearing my shirt with some celestial bodies in it. And then some, you know, items that are in the sky. I almost wore that shirt tonight. I almost wore J- it. I washed it. And Jason's time. just bringing his heavenly body. Oh, yeah. dear Lord. <laughs> yeah. um, was that a Scotland shirt there, Jason? Oh, gosh. New Scotland. Uh, it's, Alex. A, it's, a, it's a brewery label from Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia's New Scotland. Oh. Yeah. That's my home province. Well, and Jake, I wanted you to know I wore this uh, as an undershirt this evening, um, not to hide it or anything like that, but because since you got it for me and obviously for Sam, I wanted to wear it so that it was closest to my heart, oh. um, which is obviously the undershirt where it is touching flesh. So, and it's closest to your sweaty armpits too. Yeah, you would know about that. Um, yeah, don't the, the elk are the same way. Here's yeah. the thing. I saw elk for the first time <laughs> at the Grand Canyon. Now, here's the thing with those Grand Canyon elk. Those fuckers, those guys are, like, fully domesticated. Like, they'd be walking around like a cat. Like, this, like, yeah. pot, you know, you just, like, walk down the Grand Canyon way, and there's, like, an elk just laying there. But I was with a work friend. She's not very smart, but she, <laughs> she was, she she was like, trying to think of, she's like, what her. are those? And I'm like, they're elk. They're, they're fucking elk. And she's like, I don't know. Like, do you think they like, like she was trying to say they like mated, you know how like a, if you mate a horse and a donkey, you get a mule. Yes. I've never made it anything. So, so, <laughs> so what did she, so what did she think? What was the combination? She thought it was a combination of a deer and a camel. And, and I, <laughs> I was like, look girl, that was How a bless, that, happen? that was a bless your heart moment. Yeah, here oh, in the south. 1, 000, I was like, I gotta go. You're like, let's go to Starbucks. We gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mom. Nice. So oh, tonight's topic <laughs> is mating. because we had an eclipse, and my personal opinion is, who gives a fuck? But I don't see what the big deal is. I didn't watch. I don't give a shit. You're wrong. But we're gonna talk <laughs> about. Wrong. Eclipsy stuff and space stuff and moon and sun and you know anything as 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 tangentially related to an eclipse as we could possibly but, stretch it tonight. So, yeah. but Rob, were you able? Did you get any of that where you're at? Like I know yeah, Niagara we, Falls was huge, but so Niagara Falls was a hundred percent. We were ninety nine where I live because I'm oh, only Christ. Wow. I'm an hour from Niagara Falls. So I we were, we were we were literally if you'd driven like. 30 minutes south, it would have been 100%. But I, I, who gives a shit? The sun's in front of the moon. I, I, don't, I do not. Like, I saw people on the news and they were crying. Oh, yeah, they yeah. Felt, the other I'm way. so connected to the universe. I'm going, it's a fucking eclipse. Sir, what you it. just described is a lunar eclipse, which happens fairly frequently. <laughs> yeah. This was a solar eclipse where the moon is Go front of the, the sun. Rob. Who cares? Here, a I'll shit. demonstrate. This is the moon. <laughs> And this is the sun. Eric My Clifford. point being, who gives a shit? I don't get it. I don't. Okay. I'm so sick of hearing about it. Well, we got two hours to blow yeah. talking about. So it. We were gonna <laughs> no. Your ass ready, boy. <laughs> I say the eclipse. I say. I'll say. I'll say. Oh boy. <laughs> Get off my lawn. That's what I say. Yeah, yeah. You and Steve should hang out, Rob, because he's right there in your camp. I don't get it. I'm just like, dude, literally, I saw people on the news getting all emotional and crying, and I'm like, are you mental? For what? Yeah, they might be. Who cares? Yeah. It got dark say, for a minute. Woo. I, I don't know. You know, I was at the time I was in Illinois, and I was about 97%. Um, so, it, but Columbus was like 99, 100%. Like, we, Columbus would have been right in the, in the way of it, and like, 
at work they had like a whole party like i work at a place called bridge park and so they like literally the whole development made a huge event out of it like invite the kids invite the family invite the pets it's a total eclipse at bridge park you know like that sort of thing um the thing i didn't get any enjoyment out of looking through the glasses and looking at like the sun and the moon that to me i was like okay that's cool whatever to me it was the oh this is cool like it is getting dark at two o'clock and like the street lights are going on because they're sensing that it's really dark out. like that to me i was like well this is kind of cool in a very apocalyptic way and so yeah here here because it was so overcast um i mean it was it was great we had like a like a like a thunder cloud essentially over, going over the sun anyways like i couldn't see anything in terms of like the actual you know close like because we had like 84 85 percent um coverage so, like it didn't get totally dark um like in any really any capacity very slightly but not much um, yeah. but the birds were going like the birds were really chirping what about the um, bees hey? Mm, yeah, you know, like Roger McGuinn and Chris Holman, they were really going to town. Um, <laughs> it was, uh, it, it did drop, it probably did drop between eight to 10 degrees for like five minutes and then jump wow. back up. Yeah. But. Yeah, we hardly had anything here. I think it was maybe 30, 40%. And I kind of forgot about it. I was inside doing stuff. I kind of forgot <laughs> about it. So I watched stuff on the news and I was interested to a, an extent. I think if I would have been, maybe where you guys are and it would have been more of an event for me than the 30 or 40%. I probably yeah. would have checked it out, but yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So did Trump look again though? Did Trump look directly at it this time or no? Did he learn his lesson? I, that's the biggest question I have and I haven't seen that yet. Yeah. Yeah. The we haven't seen the laws of the laws of physics, like the legal laws don't apply to him. So, Oh, okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Sir, we don't talk about politics on the stream, okay? Jason's going to get offended if you keep going Listen, after boy. <laughs> <laughs> I got the controls here. I'm flying this. I'm the flying this, for the I'm heart flying of the this sun. spaceship tonight. I'm Han Solo. Don't we're, going warp, we're going warp negative two here. Jason, what's in your glass there? What's in your chalice? Some peeps? I have uh, something out of Prince George, uh, which no. is about six hours east of me. Called Deadfall Brewing. Beautiful can. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Good and Lord, you are up there in BC. If six, if Prince George is six hours east of you, you are up yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, they say Prince George is the asshole of BC, and then they say, "Where's Terrace?" I say, "Well, six hours up the asshole." <laughs> <laughs> Just keep going. Yeah. <laughs> is that your go-to dad joke, Jason? It is. I kind of introduce everyone to terrorists that way. Hi. <laughs> Jason doesn't have to worry about cyber stalkers finding out what city he lives in because they look at it on a map and they go, fuck that. Not worth, not yeah, worth my not time. Going. Nope. Not going. <laughs> yeah. Well, gentlemen, should we dive into our uh, our, our eclipsy, spacey, moon, sun, whatever the hell you got? Perfect. <laughs> hell yeah. Who wants to go first? Let's let Joe go first since he's our yeah, guest. Yeah, our honorable. All right. So I'm going uh, to make how, you big here, Joe. Yeah. How fringe? How fringy do we get? I guess we'll find out in a second. You could, here. You could stretch this theme as thin That's as you want it. Great oh, shirt. Thank God. I know. Thank great you. shirt, Joe. Thank I know, you. I love his shirt. That's it's great. my it's my spaceship shirt. Uh, actually, yeah, hand, it is. actually, hand painted. It's hand painted back in. I is don't it know, a spaceship years. or is it an upside down guitar? It's both. Uh huh. It's both. Okay, speaking of spaceships, I'm going to go with the heavy metal soundtrack. Yeah. I think that falls into space, right? The Loch Nahr was from space. It starts off with the Corvette up in space. And I think this is what we're going for, is it not? Sure. I've never seen – that's great. I've never actually seen the movie. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, we had this discussion before, and yet we're still friends. How could you not have seen this movie I, I, yet? I don't know, Joe. I don't know. <laughs> fair enough. That's fair. That's fair. Um, killer soundtrack. It's got Cheap Trick and it's got Sammy Hagar uh, before Van Halen, Black Sabbath with Dio's on there, Devo, Donald Fagan, Don Felder, Journey, Nazareth. It's it's a great, great soundtrack. And it's a very cool movie, uh, especially if you enjoy some herb tea with it while you are watching it. Mm -hmm. Like I did back in forever ago at the drive-in when it was in the theaters still. Well, <laughs> I'm in theaters anyway, so show my age a little bit. But um, 
yeah, I I thought this fit. Lots of science, lots of sci-fi fun on this one, and uh, oh, yeah. lots of Canadians too. Actually, um, Candy was in it. Well, the voice of John Candy, Eugene Levy. I think Levy. I can't remember everybody, but really good. So there, there's my first offering is the heavy metal soundtrack. Well done. It. Well done. I need Thank to find you. a way to see it. I just got. You should. It. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a great, again, it's a great movie. It's 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 animated and it's out there and I don't know. It, I think it still holds up. It was, you know, when I was however old I was when it came out, it was pretty cool at that time, but I watch it every once in a while, it still holds up and again, it's got such a killer soundtrack and the animation is really good. Um think of like Ralph Bashke's stuff if you've seen his stuff before and uh yeah, just good. And the writer the writing was good and the voice characters were good and some are pretty serious. And some are uh, more humorous, kind of like Netflix's Love, Sex, and Robots. I don't know if you've watched that at all, but uh, that was actually supposed to be like a, a heavy metal uh, oh, takeoff. And anyway, but it's great. Watch that too. There's another thing, but that doesn't have to do with space. Well, it does because it's got robots in it. I don't know. That's fair. Okay. Space. I'm done. <laughs> all right. Who's next? I'll go. Get, right. Let me get it over with. Uh, okay, Jesus. that's that's the attitude we like. Let me get it over with. Uh, this is for uh, for Joe and Rob here. I had to pick a Canadian one for sure. Uh, extra Canadian on tonight uh, from my hometown. Well, <coughs> my hometown from Halifax. My their, home their, third, their third album, 2007, and this is Winter Sleeps. Welcome to the night sky. So you don't get much more night and celestial theme than that welcome to the night sky this uh yeah like i said their third album this was like their most kind of commercial popular one they had a song on this called weighty ghost that was kind of their their i think it was actually a, a tv show in canada had that song as like the intro but i never watched the show i forget what it was called now but uh welcome to the night sky it's got a couple themes on it that are space related it's got a song called astronaut it's got a song called oblivion but anyway, in any event, pretty heady kind of themes to it, which is super cool. Um, incidentally, one of my least, one of my worst sounding records in my collection. I think this is like one of those ones that are indicative of like a CD rip or something like that. I'll put that album on and then I'll stream it through the same system. And it is unfortunately like bad. I don't even really play that wax anymore because it's just that bad, which is sad, but whatever. What's the name of the band? Sorry. Winter Sleep. Uh -huh. Yeah, great drummer. The, I don't know if they have the same line. They definitely don't have the same lineup as original. He uh, laid out, but uh, yeah, they're all from my home province. And uh, they did a lot of work while they're in Halifax and that kind of area. And then I think they moved basically all their production stuff to Toronto, like everyone else in Canada does eventually. But uh, Juno award winning band. Uh, I think they were a new group of the year uh, in the early 2000s. But uh, yeah, great Canadian band. Still kind of out there. Like, I picked up their most recent album a couple <laughs> years ago. So they're still kind of floating around. I, I have never seen them live. It was one of those bands that I thought in university they would do, like, Frosh Weeks and stuff. But I never did catch them. But, uh, yeah, great band. Good catalog. I would check them out. If you haven't heard of Winter Sleep, I would check that particular album out. I think it's probably their best work. When you, you said you, when you said you were picking someone from out east, I'm like, he's going to show some haywire. No, no. <laughs> bad, bad boys. Sam, Sam, are you okay? That's just a good stream. <laughs> you, you lost it for a second, my guy. Why? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's important to have a good stream at any age. It is. You know, <laughs> right. Ask your doctor if you have trouble urinating at night. Yeah. Um, I'll go. I'm not. Um, no, Sam should go next. Yeah, I'll go. Show us your um, Don't show us your stream, though. Don't show us your stream. Yeah, no, that's for the after dark. That's for uh, the after dark. Uh, the, I, don't, I don't have a lot of surprises, for, again, for my taste, but, I mean, any reason to show these songs is, is worth it to me. So I'm going to show from um, an underrated Tom Petty album, the uh, She's the One. And I also, I was very lazy tonight and just pulled CDs. Um, boo, boo. I know. I'm not a real, <laughs> I'm not a real YouTuber. Um this is the she's the one. This is the she's the one soundtrack, which was the follow up to um, Wildflowers. Um, obviously, a lot of extra songs that didn't make the Wildflowers cut, um, and then a few covers. There was one instrumental on here at the end. 
Um, but this, they have a lot of good collaborations. I think uh, Lindsey Buckingham's on this album. Carl Wilson's on here from the Beach Boys. But there's a song on here. It's, again, very underrated. I don't know if that's ever been done live. Um, was the song Zero from Outer Space um, by Tom Petty, which is just like this cool garage rock kind of crunchy guitar. Um, Mike Campbell's just going to town on, on that guitar, um, playing it pretty well too. And, you know, it was just... Just one of those songs like when the first time that I heard it, I was like, wow, that's a really good song. Um, yeah, I mean, it just kind of a again, simple lyrics, nothing too deep about it. Just one of the one of the heavier Tom Petty songs, but I mean it's just a great song. It's got some great kind of like looping background vocals to it. Um, again, called the Zero from Outer Space from She's the One. One of the things that frustrated me though was um a few years back, and I think I know I think Alex has this as well. Yeah. When they did the the uh, the Angel Dream um, record for Record Store Day, and then they ended up mass releasing it. Essentially, they made this album like it would be a normal album, like it would like instead of like a soundtrack to this movie. Because again, it was a soundtrack to that movie. She's the one. Um, I know Jennifer Aniston was in it. I think um, um, if you, Cameron Diaz is in that. John Mahoney, but they released a, a version of this album as like a completed album. So like on this album, you have a couple of tracks that are there are two different versions of them on on the record and then they released the the angel dream set um the, when the album and they you know essentially they just took one song they didn't do the doubles and they removed a couple of songs from um from she's the one and i believe um zero from outer space was removed for some reason um on that album i might be mistaken with another song but i believe it was it was um not added to that album so anyway Great album, um, very underrated. It's got some great songs on it, but Zero from Outer Space is my number one pick. Cool. Right, Rob? Mm. Yep. <laughs> I, no, I thought when you said Petty, you were just going to go with um, full, moon, full Moon Fever. So Full Moon Fever, yeah. Ah, shoot. But, I, have, I should go grab that. But, but and, I mean, yeah. your pick still works, Sam. I mean, thank you. I'm so now I'm interested. I don't I think I might be thinking about I know the song California didn't make the um Angel Dream album, which is my favorite song from that album, but yeah, I might be wrong. But yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Alex. Beautiful. You want to go? I, don't know if I've seen, I don't know if I've seen that movie. I should have seen that movie, but it I've, I've never seen the movie. I don't plan on seeing the movie, but it's like it's good. I've, I've never even heard the soundtrack. I didn't realize Buckingham was on there and yeah, so the song, the first version, there's two versions of Walls and two versions of Angel Dream. Um, the first version of Walls has Lindsay on the background, and then there's the song Hung Up and Overdue, which has Carl Wilson in one of his, like his last year of recording, because this was 97, and he died in 98. Yeah. Um, so he kind of he kind of wanted to do like a like a post Pet Sounds kind of Beach Boy song, and so he had Carl Wilson um, jump on there um and play but yeah rob this is a good record i mean it's got i should get that absolutely they also they do covers by um they do um change the locks the lucinda williams song um they do again i think there were there are two there were two instrumentals like brief like piano instrumentals by ben mott um they do a, a beck tune um they do a few a few covers and like i said a few wallflowers i mean wallflowers leftovers but um yeah rob you this is essential i would dig that i think for sure definitely check it out Cool. I'll look for it. Alex. All right. Well, greetings from Columbus, Ohio with my 449 subscribers. Let's, hey. get, to that four, let's get to that 450. Let's get that 450 right. tonight. Um, well, I, I, I picked a lot of albums. Most of most of what I picked were albums, uh, not necessarily songs. But my first pick will be a song, and I'll get the obvious one completely out of the way. Um even though somebody else might do it, but I wanted to show, because I think, I mean, this is like, you know, really there are two major songs that everybody was talking about, you know, Total Eclipse of the Heart um, from Bonnie Tyler and then this other one. But I, I think what's important here to think about is if you could think of like two huge songs in rock history where the sort of, you know, I, I don't even want to call it a cover version, but the rearrangement and the reinterpretation of the song became the definitive song right i think you would talk about um uh all along the watchtower you know hendrix doing the dylan bit and i think the other one you would talk about is blinded by the light 
course, originally nice. on Bruce's uh, debut, Greetings from Asbury Park, and then really just completely, I mean, blown up in the best of ways from Manfred Mann's Earth Band in 77. Um, this is off the Roaring Silence album. And I, and I was pumped, too, because I don't have a ton of 45s, but I do have a Manfred Mann Blinded by the Light 45. So that's a keeper. Um, but, I mean, you know, you just think about how he takes a, you know, decent kind of folky singer songwriter rock and roll tune. Um, you know, there's certainly nothing wrong with the original. It's, 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 it's great how it is. And to me, it's not just a, a cover. I mean, what he was able to do with that a song. Reimagining. Re, a complete reimagining. I mean, it's proggy. It's long. It's epic. They throw in chopsticks for crying out. You know what I mean? Like, it, 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 it's just it, it's just perfect. So, um, yeah, uh, be sure not to look into the eyes of the sun. But, mama, that's where the fun is. <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah, I just I love that song. I mean, that is one of the songs. There's not a lot of them. That is one of the songs that I've heard on FM radio growing up, and still today a gazillion times. But I still don't really tire of it. I just it's just so perfect to me. So that is my pick. The interpretation of "Blinded by the Light" from Manfred Mann's Earth Band. Manny Manny's Earth Blinded. Yeah. Well, I mean, fun fact: so Manfred Mann's Earth Band. I mean, they started as like a blues band. I mean, they were yeah. like a blues R and B group in the early mid '60s, and then complete. I mean, they went complete proggy. So, yeah, good stuff. Great band, and he's still out there too, isn't he? Old man's. Yeah, he's like eighty, but yeah, he's oh out there. God. Yep. Yep. All right, I am next, and I can't believe <laughs> that no one, in reference to the eclipse, has mentioned. Staring at the sun by you too. I'm not the only one staring at the sun. I'm happy to go blind. I mean, shit. That's that what the damn eclipse does to you, right? So, uh, you know, for those of us that watched. What's that? So for those of us that watched. <laughs> yeah, I did not watch. I have more important <laughs> things to do. Uh, you know, this is their their what everyone kind of considers their shitty album, and it kind of is. I listened to it today actually for the first time in years. And I still maintain half of it's actually not that bad. But unfortunately, you, you know, you start off with like Disco Tech and Mofo, which are, you know, not great songs. But the middle part of the album is actually pretty good. Last Night on Earth, Staring at the Sun, If God Will Send His Angels. Like there, there are some good stuff on here. There's a lot of shit too, but I don't think there's a more suitable solar eclipse song than Staring at the Sun. So... Discotheque was the first single, right? Was Staring at the Sun number two? Uh, I think so, yeah. Yeah, it's the only two I remember, actually. All of the, the singles were uh, Discotheque, and then it was Staring at the Sun, and then I think it was Last Night on Earth, and then it was If God Will Send His Angels, and then Please. Yeah, Those were the singles off the album. Discotheque was a huge deal when that came out. It got a lot of attention. <coughs> It was such a well, because it was so different than everything that they had done. It's, I mean, it's kind of yeah, techno y and dancey, and it was, you know, like all the and strobe the lights and disco yeah. ball shit. And I remember that at the time that tour was like a big production value tour, it wasn't the pop part tour, it had the big, the big golden yeah. arch with the uh, with the lemon in it in the middle of it. Yeah, Jeez. it was an incredible stage show. Yeah, so. Uh, let's see here. A few comments. Uh, where do we start here? Uh, Solar System by the Beach Boys. Sam would know that better than I would. So I don't know that one. Cowboy Junkies, Blue Moon or Visited. Love the Cowboy Junkies. Don't have enough of it. Good old man for man. Nicely done, mon frere. Thank you, mon frere. And then a whole bunch of people saying hi to Trevor. And everybody care. else. Pop isn't that bad. Yeah, I, I, that's was I'd kind of my hypothesis that. when I did my YouTube ranking a week or so ago. And when I listened to pop again today, did you say it's kind of like, yeah, half good, half not. Rob, were you just saying that that was the tour that they had the lemon? They had like a they had a like a big arch and then there was like a lemon in the middle of it. Kind right. of right. Is, is that one that they were supposed to like come out of? Yeah. Because that was like their spinal tap moment, right? Like yeah. But yeah, <laughs> it was a hell of a concert. Hell of a concert. I didn't get to see it in person, but I have several bootlegs of it. And 
So, all right. Uh, round two. Yep. Back to Joe. Joe. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, I've kind of gone more the space theme than than the than the sun and the light thing. But so mine is going to be ELO out of the blue. So, you know, there's there's lots of good stuff on there. But if nothing else, it's, uh, you know, again, it's got a cool spaceship on the front. And then I don't have it anymore. But I think there was even uh, I think there were some versions where there was actually inside there was a spaceship that you could build. It was a cardboard spaceship. You could make it in that. So, yeah, so. Uh, again, I you know, I kind of took the space part and ran with it a little bit as I look at my stack versus the. Uh, but oh, how, nice. how cool is that? And then I think they used to do that. That used to be their stage show. And I think still is kind of they would come down. ELO would come down in the spaceship and uh, and go from there. And then, you know, there's a gatefold for you, too. So that's that's pretty sweet all around. Plus, that it's got awesome. one of, Plus, it's got one of the greatest songs ever, Mr. Blue Sky. So before the eclipse and after the eclipse, you had Mr. Blue Sky. So, you know, I'm kind of bringing it all back around again. But, yeah, one of my favorites. Um, I think they're supposed to do a small tour again this year, I think. Like, you know, it'll be two dates and they'll both be in London at the at the, oh, uh, no, they, the they arena. announced the full tour. I'm going. Are you? Yeah. Yeah. They're go they're, it's it's they just added like second um second night to so a lot of the bigger venues. Awesome. Um but I'm seeing them in a, in Atlanta in October. That's um, perfect. Yeah I mean they're gonna be you know they're in New York for a couple nights. They're in um New Orleans they're in Ohio I think right Alex somewhere. Yeah I gotta find a way to go. Um, yeah, I'm going with a couple of buddies of mine. You were mentioning when I stepped away for a second, the uh, spaceship. So one of the guys that I'm going with, he has a channel. I talk about him all the time. Tommy from Tommy's Musical Adventures. He has, I've been to his house several times and he has the, the cardboard um, spaceship that he's built and he's got it setting up, you know, in his music room. Um, it's really, really a cool little thing to see. Um, yeah. But yeah, but yeah, they're doing, they're doing, a, it's a final tour. It's called like Over and Out, I think is what it's called. The yeah. tour. Um, yeah, it'll be pretty darn good. So because you know, Jeff can still sing, I saw some footage from you know a, a few years ago when Jeff Lynn's ELO or whatever over it. And it was the O2. I was being a smart ass because we just don't get anything up here. I think maybe maybe they're playing Toronto. Maybe I'm not even sure if they're playing Toronto. So, but yeah, I don't know. Well, well Richard Tandy's not going to be in it. So, well, Dick and, Tandy. And you, you know what they say? No Dick Tandy, no ELO. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's my second offering. That's uh, that's probably a contender for the best album art of the evening for sure, as far as uh, space stuff goes. Oh, for sure. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's such a good album too. I really like Yellow. I, everything, everything. So, I just listened to El Dorado the other day again. I did too. About so two, did I. Week and a half yeah. ago or so. Yeah, that's a proggy album. Yeah, yeah, certainly, definitely. I yep. think it was uh, one of our Canadian YouTubers. There was it, uh, Chris over at Stylus Meets Vinyl. Meets Vinyl. Yeah, yeah. He uh, he was talking about El Dorado, and uh, he he busted. gifted me that one. I him and I were record shopping in Toronto. He bought it for me. Right on. Nice. Yeah. So I've been kind of spinning it a couple times since he was such a huge fan. I thought I'd give it a whirl, and I gave it a couple of listens. It is like I guess it's very proggy, right? Like it's a different kind of album. I don't well, even. I don't. It's all like. I, uh, isn't it called like a like the like the subtitle of the album is called like a, a musical yeah. Yeah. something musical symphony yeah. something yeah or yeah something, yeah, something yeah. like that yep it's like a, it's a piece right yeah 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 like my toupee <laughs> yes sir mine too right yeah. <laughs> yeah must forgot to put it on today yeah that's okay you're sick it's fine yeah ex exactly that's right <laughs> Jason you're up. Uh, Sam, this is for you, my friend. Uh, their third album, 2018, and this is Lord Huron's Vide Noir. Uh, sorry for the glare there. But the song on the album, my well, I have two favorite songs in this album. First off, if you don't know Lord Huron, Sam can give you a better primer than I could. But uh, Primer? Yeah. <laughs> or, or <laughs> newer. Oh. yeah thank you. <laughs> Uh, Back from the Edge is my favorite song on the album. Moonbeam is my second favorite song. Yep. So, Moonbeam, if you want to know anything about Lord Euron, well, I wouldn't say choose Moonbeam, but as far as catchy songs from the album, Moonbeam would probably win you over for this one. 
it's uh, I, I would say it's the most kind of commercial. I'm just looking it up now. I'm trying to remember what the singles were from the album, but um, in any event, uh, I don't think there, is there other, other one here too. Uh, and the first track, Lost in Time and Space. So it kind of suits matters too. Right? You can also go with like Emerald Star, right? Isn't that Emerald awesome? Star is the last track on the album? You know, the balancer's eye when the night is over. There's a lots of kind of you know sort of ethereal, spacey sort of themes with the album for sure. Um, but yeah, Moonbeam is the choice for sure. <laughs> it's uh, I love it. I, I just put this on. I think I spun that less than a week ago. The whole thing, start to finish. It's a beautiful, beautiful album. How would you? More, how, more would, you're on. how would you describe their stuff, Jason? Because I mean, I, I talk about them all the time. Oh man, I I don't know. Like I find that. <sighs> it's like indie art rock like it's 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 more in depth than just like a typical pop album it's you know, it's not pop yeah it's not pop it's uh you know it it takes i think it takes effort to get into like you have to like the sound and once you realize that then you kind of understand that all their albums kind of are your own individual sort of pieces in a sense right i, I think long lost is the, the most concept like solid piece of an album <laughs> but this one is kind of ties itself together quite nicely too i think i would i would throw in there with with that band this might be a little philosophical i think they're when you said that they're they're hard well it's like difficult to get into like that sort of thing i think lord huron is a band that's easy to like but more difficult to love it, it's like there's a different layer involved like i think you could put on any lord huron record to anybody who listens to you know, indie stuff, folky stuff, uh, even some like psychedelic like type stuff, and I, and it's accessible, right? It's not like avant weird out there. Like, what is going on here? I don't like it. <laughs> and, and so, yeah. I, you know, I think there's that element of accessibility there. We're like, yeah, I like this. I could dig this. I mean, one of their songs is like one of the biggest singles of all time. But yeah, <clears throat> but I think there's like that other there's layers to this, right? Like, there's that additional layer that we really start to appreciate what they're doing and. Uh, from that artistic standpoint, so yeah. And Jason, you could have even gone with "The Moon Doesn't Mind," which is the opening track from Long Lost. Long Lost, yeah, I thought of that too. Yeah, yeah, great band. Please check them out. All right, Alex, I guess. Yes, yes. Alex. Here's Sam. Sam, who's next? Sam, I lost track already. That's so. okay. I'm sick. Can I use that excuse? We're all showing the same stuff that people won't listen to. Um, Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, as you as you know, I'm a big fan of this guy. Um, I know I've kind of gotten Jason into his second to most recent album. Um, this is well, it's oh, a terrible glare. My my apartment's yellow. Um, you know, I don't know, gonorrhea, whatever you want to call it. Um, <laughs> well, no, what is it? What is it? What is it? Uh, gonorrhea. Of the the liver. Liver. It's like yeah, of jaundice. The jaundice. Of the liver. <laughs> Yeah. It's not quite the same thing. I get to wear makeup, you know. Thank um, goodness Sam's not a doctor. So this is uh, this Got is Altitude yeah. by Marty Stewart and his fabulous superlatives. Um, it's the most recent album. Um, again, I've talked about it before. People that know Marty Stewart's early like eighty stuff, he was mainstream country. He was you know right there with like the you know the Randy Travis's, the Clint Blacks, like people like that. But then. He started shifting into more thematic albums. He started hanging out with Johnny Cash. He was actually Johnny Cash's son-in-law for a few years. And he, especially of late, with his superlatives band, who they had a TV show. There's some great clips online with his superlatives on his TV show. They ventured more into, you know, they're, they're, they're definitely pulling in, like, roots with, like, the birds and Tom Petty and uh, some psychedelic kind of stuff, but also sticking true to, you know, like Buck Owens and Dwight Yoakam, like kind of in that in that vein. But this is his most recent album. It was my album of the year last year, um, again, called Altitude. There's a song on here called Space. Um, you can't really, you can't, you can't see it, but I mean, there's, there's Marty and the boys. Um, Space is a really, it's very trippy. I mean, I, I saw him live um, for the, probably the early fall last year or late summer um, outdoors. And it was one of the few tracks that they actually played using an electric guitar. But Marty has this like, uh, it's one of those like guitars with a sitar kind of built into the side. I know Steve Miller plays, plays one, um, but it's just a really, really cool kind of just, it's, it's spacey. It's trippy. And, you know, it's definitely pulling from like the sixties kind of stuff, which is funny because Marty is not a man to, 
to dabble in the narcotics. Um, he's pretty straight laced, but he, like he, you know, he, he, he ventures into that world on this album. I know he did on his last <laughs> before this called way out West, which again, I know Jason's really into right now. Um, but this kind of follows in line with that. Um, it's a little bit more country. A couple of the singles are, are more straight ahead country, but there are, there is things on here like, like space and like other things that are, again, they're birdsy. They're, they're kind of, psychedelic spacey and that one that one on this album is very very true i mean it, it fits right in like i said with 60s kind of stuff just very sparse instrumentation some cool effects on the vocals but um yeah space from altitude by marty stewart you need to check out this album it's really I good will. yeah yes yeah jason especially since you're in that mood um with with that album way out west right now there are there are a few on this that are just really really good that you might you might end up buying it. Like I said, a little bit more country, but it's got some really good stuff. So, cheers. Cheers. Cool. <laughs> All right, Alex, what do you got for us? All right, well, here is a band that's huge, huge band, wide discography, uh, classic, progressive, but really more space rock, very trippy. Um, I only have two of their albums because uh, their albums, the originals are actually pretty darn hard to find and they're expensive but i mean i think they're a band that sort of really epitomized this whole space rock thing um so not only uh showing them on behalf of them epitomizing space rock but that these both have um space themes and they're one after each other so i'm talking about the great Hawkwind, um in search of space and then their live record that came right around the same time, Space Ritual. Uh, sorry, Rob, we're going to get shut down for that cover. Um, <laughs> also, I mean, for, for the people out there who don't know, Lemmy Kilmeister, who obviously would go on to do Motorhead and kind of become a icon in rock and roll, metal, all that kind of stuff. You know, he's ripping the bass on these two records. He was in Hawkwind um, well before that. And so uh, this literally, not only from like the title of the records, but – um, this is some out there spacey rhythmic stuff. Um, not for everyone, I would say that. Um, but if you are into that sort of far out spacey again, rhythmic sort of thing, uh, these are way up there. So yeah, Hawkwind. I mean, they're they've put out like fifty records. I feel like. I mean, they just put out one earlier this year, last year, and they're still making records. But uh, definitely that sort of early to mid seventies period. Um, is sort of that sweet spot. So these are two uh, absolute bangers, if you will. Um, I will. In, uh, in, uh, in space rock world. So, yeah, incredible stuff. Incredible. I had, I had the second one, and, yeah, it was, uh, you know, I listened to it a couple of times, but it eventually moved on to somebody else in the yeah. end. I don't know. It just, <laughs> it was there, but uh, I just, it just, it didn't stay, I guess. Hey, if you love something, set it free, you know. Yep. Or, sure it, it, or if you don't love it, set it free, you know? Trade it, trade it for something you do love. Yeah. yeah. Somebody loves, because of you, somebody loves that record, Joe. That's right. Yep. Exactly. Okay. I'm up. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to show something that is very obscure, not because it's obscure, but because I think the story is fascinating. I can pretty much guarantee I'm the only one that even knows who this artist is. This is a band called Greylands. Greylands is essentially Wayne Petty from the band Cuff the Duke, who Jason's probably heard of. Yep. Uh, this was a side project he did, and this was the first album called Songs by Other People. On its own, absolutely fantastic album. It is an album of covers, and um, he has a bunch of uh, other prominent <laughs> musicians join him on this album. Again, Jason, you'll know most of these. Hayden, Greg Keeler, uh, Sarah Harmer, Julie Fader, Randy Bachman, Joel Plaskett, bunch oh, of Christ. yeah. So it's 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 a bunch of duets, and it's fantastic. How this is space themed related, and this is where the story is interesting. There's a song in here called UFO. There was an album that was put out in 1969 by a guy named Jim Sullivan, and the album was called UFO. Oh, yes. Alex probably knows it. And there was a song on there called UFO, and it's about seeing a UFO. Mm -hmm. Great song. And Wayne's version that he does on here, he does it with uh, um, Nils Edenloff from the Royal Alberta Advantage. 
another Canadian band. Uh, their version of it is fantastic. I prefer it to the Jim Sullivan version just because it's the version I heard first and I'm sort of predisposed, I think, to like it more. But what's interesting about this, for those that don't know about Jim Sullivan, he put out the album UFO in 1969 and for all intents and purposes was a commercial flop. Uh, did nothing. And he lived in Los Angeles with his wife and his, I think he had a daughter, I think. And... Um, he decided that he would make a trek to Nashville to, to get some gigs and try and cut another record and try and make something of himself. So at some point in 75, he took off in his Volkswagen bug and headed off from Los Angeles to Nashville. And several days later, his car was found abandoned in the New Mexico desert with all his belongings in it, including his wallet, and he was nowhere to be found. And to this day... He has vanished into thin air, and nobody knows what happened nobody to him. Nobody knows where he is. Yeah. What? Just, who knows? Probably wandered off into the desert and was eaten by coyotes or something. But <laughs> who knows? Maybe he was zapped up by a UFO. Who knows? But Well, you know, you, uh... the moose are actually more prone to yeah. attacking <laughs> yeah. the yeah. Moose. Yeah. Coyotes yeah. than the coyotes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to go off on a side story here because you mentioned coyotes. I, I'm planning a video. And because I know some people involved in the album, there is there was a singer songwriter in Canada. This is way off on a tangent, but it's about coyotes. There was a singer songwriter in Canada about uh, twelve years ago, and she is the only recorded human coyote fatality in North America. So she was this young uh, singer songwriter named Taylor Mitchell, um, kind of folky kind of stuff. And she just recorded her first album. And a good friend of mine from high school who's part of the Sky Diggers, she was, he was her drummer. She was out on tour in, I want to say Nova Scotia, Jason. I'm pretty sure it was like Cape Breton maybe. And uh, the, the afternoon before a gig, she went out on a hike in a provincial park and was mauled to death and eaten by coyotes. Hmm. Yeah, that's right. You're right, Rob. It was Cape Breton. I you know, what, you've heard the story, right? Yeah, that's right. So I'm, I'm trying to actually deal. put it. I'm trying to put a video together because my buddy Noel was her drummer, and through him, I can get in touch with a couple other people that were on it. And I'm, I want to put that video. But there you go, Coyote. Rob, Rob is actually interviewing the coyote <laughs> next, <laughs> next week. It's like, it's like Springer. Let's bring the coyote out. <laughs> <He's> coyote. <laughs> He's not the father. Yeah. Bearing in mind, folks, a young girl died at the hands of this coyote. Uh, is she still singing songs? What's that? She's still singing songs? Is that what you oh, she said? Dead. <laughs> she dead. The she dead. Colonel. Yeah, I know. It's... So, anyway, you, you spoke uh, about coyotes. Anyway, you know, like, uh, Rob, so. Or maybe Joe, like, you, Rob, you mentioned the uh, rural and Al Alberta advantage. Yes. What do, we, what do we know about them? I've uh, streamed them like once <laughs> my, uh, we don't don't know anything about them yet. No. I mean, I, I I know of them. I have a couple songs that they've done. They were on. They're on Paper Bag Records. So uh, through a few yeah. of the Paper Bag Records compilations, I've got they're on there. But yeah, the little I, I, heard, I liked them. a lot, but I haven't really dove deep into them yet. But no, I haven't either. Nope. So. I'm of no help whatsoever. The song <laughs> UFO. There we go. Cool. Check out if you can find Jim Sullivan's record. It was re, uh, repressed uh, possibly that the light in the attic label that does a lot of those vintage reissues like uh, yep. Rodriguez album. Great they label. repressed the Jim Sullivan album. It, so. was, it was a uh, vinyl me please too. I think they still was it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got it. So. That's what I got. Let's look at a couple uh, comments here. <coughs> Sorry if I'm losing my voice folks. Uh, where are we here? I'm way back up here. Hey, Rich. Rich was talking about how she's the one is a mediocre rom com, but the soundtrack is very good. Uh, good call, Sam on Zero from Outer Space. It rocks, change the locks is a great cover. Walls is one of my favorite petty tunes. Yes, sir. None. Good yeah. to see you, Rich. <laughs> Ace Freely, Space Invader. What a good one. Jason, I'm really afraid to look at what you just texted me. Is you going to make me lose my shit? Uh, <laughs> Yellow's due in Toronto on September the 9th. There you oh. go. Yeah. Vide Noir is French for empty black. Empty black. 
Primer, a Jalino. Speaking of UFO, the first two UFO albums were very space rock. So very true. Uh, and difficult yeah. to find, too. Yeah, that was before. Yeah, a lot of people look at think UFO and they think Phenomenon is their debut. But no, there was two before that that are crazy. Oh, the song by the Muppets? That's the one. That's the one. one. That's the one, yeah. Sam. <laughs> Sex in the Tub. <laughs> Alex is like, cover, UFO, 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 UFO. Jeez. Joe, this is a family show. Oh, yeah. right. I, you know, you and I have only ever been on, on After Dark, so that's I, true. I, that's you know, true. I, you know. <laughs> I don't know. Where UFO having cover. Joe where there's a couple work. having sex in the tub. Do they not? <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. That's the uh, obsession. Correct. Yeah, but yeah. what song do they do? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, whatever they. <laughs> well, <laughs> this is on the tail end of Sam saying something about the Muppets, and then you're like, "Yeah, sex in the tub." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Vagino says, "Stay classy, Joe." <laughs> All right, like, Miss Piggy. That's it. It's in space. <laughs> Pigs in space. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, Joe, you're up next on that note. What else you got for us? <laughs> the guy the guy who or girl whose name is vaginal tells me to stay classy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whatever. That's fine. That's fine. All right. So um you, someone someone mentioned it earlier. The one that was obviously right on the nose of our topic tonight was total eclipse of the heart. So I've not got that, <laughs> but uh and it wasn't planned, I guess it wasn't planned, to show a couple of soundtracks. But at the beginning of the movie, there is an eclipse in 2001, oh. A Space Odyssey, right at the very beginning. I think the opening shot or close to the opening shot. And then there's a bunch of cavemen pounding their bones, which is completely different than sex in the tub. But anyway, um, <laughs> so yeah, so I thought nice that this would job, be Joe. I thought this would be fairly fitting. And again, it's a uh. it's a pretty cool it's a pretty cool cover. You know, it's got uh, obviously it's got lots of space stuff and spaceships and spacemen and everything else. So, yeah. And like I said, if you've seen the movie now, I haven't seen the movie for forever and I don't remember it. I don't remember it as that good of a movie. I, I don't know. Maybe I was not old enough because I did watch it a long time ago. And it's critically uh, acclaimed, but I always found the pacing on it. But that's Kubrick, right? It's just. Sure, yeah. I just it, never you don't need forty five minutes to watch the astronaut go like this across the screen. Yeah, but I found the pacing on it was terrible. Yeah, exactly. but I'm not artsy, so fuck. What do I know? <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> it, was, it was almost the same pacing as when the moon went across the sun. <laughs> Again, who cares? So uh, tangent, if I may, and I don't you know guys. if any of you have seen it, but I guess there was some in in Mexico. There was a news station in Mexico that really didn't do their fact-checking because what some guy did is he got in the sun and then stood up and he made his own eclipse with things. And, you know, so he kind of just, he kind of, you know, sat down a little bit and his testicles made the eclipse over the sun. And anyway, this, <laughs> this news station in Mexico took it for a real, the real eclipse video <laughs> and they showed it. So I don't know if you Google Mexican testicle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know for sure what you'll get. You might get that. That's just called day to day web searching. <laughs> yeah. I heard first, today. That's my favorite tapas bar in town. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> So anyway, I, it's Mexican out there. Mexican. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't seen it, and I didn't do it, but I heard about it. So, but you're recommending you us search it. So. Uh, <laughs> oh, there you go, Mexican testicle eclipse. Yeah, sure, sure you're screen, testicle Ron. eclipse. Uh, no, M T E for short. Yeah. Anyway, 2001: A Space Odyssey. There you go. <sighs> Listen, what you got? I refuse to Google that. Oh, come on. Give it a shot. Yeah, my algorithm's already screwed up anyway. Yeah. Yeah, we don't need to don't need to throw that in the mix, right? No. Okay. Ballin. I don't have much to say about this, but the title <laughs> but the title of the album says it all, and that is their sixth studio album. I only have the first one and I have this one. Maybe Alex, I'm relying on you. Tell me what is the next best of the albums. But their debut is one of my favorites I own. 
And then I love this one because of the hit single, their best single they ever had, most best performing one, and that is Space and Time, <laughs> 10 Years After. You if, you, if you like that album, you should really listen to uh, Mexican Testicle Eclipse. <laughs> Great. Yeah. It was Great a working album. title. I think that was just a working title. I don't know if they ever used yeah, it. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, so obviously this is, uh, what is this, 1971. They said that this album was a little bit, uh, I wouldn't say softer, but just wasn't as hard rocking as some of their previous work. But uh, in any event, it has their hit song, I'd Love to Change the World on it, which I used to hear that song on the radio, Q104, Halifax, all the time. And I never knew the band or the name. And it took me, it was one of those songs, you know, you get like a, you know, it's stuck in your head. You don't know what the hell it is. It took me months to figure that out. Like we're talking, you know, pre-internet, pre-Shazam or Soundhound. Like you don't get that option. It's just like you have to try to hum the song to a buddy or whatever and hope that they finally pick it up. Incidentally, like by buddy, and I, I remind him of this every time I see him, he actually knew what the hell I was talking about and solved this riddle for me. So when I finally found out it was called I'd Love to Change the World by 10 years after, that was when I learned about this band in general. And obviously this album has that on it. It's their best performing hit, but their debut is my favorite for sure. Not nobody, knowing the rest of their catalog really, but. No, nobody going to say it took until 10 years after to figure out who it was. Nobody. Yeah. Really? No. Come on. Guys. I, I, I'll say, Jason, I am not the, uh, I'm not, well, I, I really like 10 years after. I'm not a, a huge expert, but I think those, everything in between is great. Right. So I have a, uh, which is great uh amazing um is it cricklewood green yeah i think that's great right before, right before me uh, I, yeah. so all that I, all that stuff what's the one it might be what's the one with all the balloons and shit floating around uh um, i don't know there's one called is there one called stonehenge or something stonehenge too? i have two that one's that yeah. one's great stonehenge is great that one's a little bit more psyche and weird uh but yeah. that's good stuff to have that one that stonehenge was their like second that. i believe yeah. Um, no, it's definitely one of those artists that I see a lot of those albums in between, but every time I see them, they're in like terrible shape. So I haven't picked any up yet, but uh, I'll probably own most of them. Alvin Lee's phenomenal guitarist and, and, you know, anyway, great stuff. Space and time. It says space. There you go. I love it. Good. Sam Wise. Um, yeah, I've got a few here. Um, let's see. Um, I'm going to go, I don't know. I'm going to go with this. Um, and I mean, I've, again, this is a group that I talk about all the time. Um, Tropic Willberry is obviously, you know, if you don't know, super group, the biggest, biggest super group in terms of star power ever. There's no way that anybody will ever be able to compete with this with George Harrison, Roy Orbison, Tom Petty, Jeff Lynn, and Bob Dylan, um, put out two records, um, volume one and volume three. I'm going to talk about volume three um, because I'm, I always talk about volume one. It was again, the record that got me into music, but there's a song on here. Um, it's mostly a Jeff Lynn tune. I um, mean, the second album, Roy Orbison already passed away. So Roy Orbison wasn't on here. Um, you know, he was tippy toeing out to the next, to the next venture in life. But um, new blue moon is a great harmony tune um, with all the guys singing. I mean, it's just like this great kind of fifties, kind of sounding tune with the with Bob Dylan kind of doing the middle eight. And um, just, just one of those great, again, it's just musically it's simple, but it sounds very fifties. It sounds almost very Del Shannon um, style, which I know like Tom Petty and, and Jeff Lynn um, were both big fans and both worked with Del Shannon um, in the late eighties on his album called rock on, um, which was a record store they released a few years ago. But um, really, really cool song. Very, very underrated. Um, obviously, the Wilburys never toured, so there's no live versions of that song. But um, just a really, a really cool, <clears throat> cool track. Again, Volume Three is very underrated because the first album, I mean, had "Handle with Care" and "End of the Line" on it. Um, Tweeter and that Monkey Man, you know, um, yeah. you know, he he was hanging around, you know, the Michael Nesmith and everything. Um, but uh. Volume three still had a couple of, of cool singles like She's My Baby, Inside Out, Wilbury Twist, which if you watch the video for Wilbury Twist, um, that has um, John Candy in it um, during his big. I just um, want to point out that John Candy has now made two appearances tonight. 
fucking <laughs> should. As he should. Yeah. As he should. As um, he should. Yeah, that's right. As he should. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, we're surrounded by Canadians, Alex. So we have to, we have to throw in some, some JC. Yeah. Um, and I'm not talking about Johnny Cash. Jesus Christ. But, oh, um, oh. yeah. Um, Juan Carlos. Um, I don't know. Everybody's leaving, Joe. Jason's gone. Just Rob's you gone. and me. Yeah. Jason just left all together. Yeah. Jason, Jason dipped I'm out. Listening. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, this is just a really, really good, a really, really good, um, track i mean again it's it's 50 sounding but this whole that, that whole album and the, the the volume three um you have a, I mean, to me this is a very it's a very dylan help heavy album um which i like i mean I'm, I'm a big bob dylan fan as as everybody knows but um cool cool stuff on here there's like a country tune called poor house which is like a duet with with um tom petty and jeff lynn um seven deadly sins is very like a like a 50s kind of doo-wop ballad um, there's a great tune called Cool Draw Place, kind of a funny song about uh, keeping your instruments essentially locked up as a, as a touring band uh, that Tom Petty sings. But um, yeah, New Blue Moon, that's going to be my uh, that's going to be my pick here. So, you know, you, you talk about the greatest super group and I, I don't disagree with you. Just the, the talent, the songwriting, um, you know, Jeff Lynn and all the all of what he brought to it. Uh, the engineering aspects, yeah. Uh, you know, a guy, a guy like Roy who just probably showed up and did his deal and was there and was a big part of it. And the same he was the mentor. Bob. Yeah, yeah. Everybody yeah. looked at him. Just, it's unbelievable. I mean, I don't know if there's, I don't know if there's anybody that be would be watching a YouTube show about music that doesn't know who they are. But please, if you don't know who they are, you have to go and check them out because it's just, it's phenomenal. It's such a shame and. I don't know if you're in the camp, Sam, of because there can't ever be another if there could be something similar. But I mean, I I don't think there there could be. There could be. I mean, there's guys that could form something, but it would yeah. never be that, though. No, and again, like you have, you know, you have a beetle in a group. If you just if you have a beetle and Bob Dylan in a group by themselves, you know, yeah. the greatest group of all time, voted by many of the greatest songwriter of all time, of Bob Dylan. Anybody else that's in that group. It doesn't matter. They're still the greatest super group. Yeah, Bob Dylan, George Harrison. But then you throw yeah, one of the yeah. greatest producers of all time, but Jeff <laughs> Lynn, one of the greatest vocalists of all time with Roy Orbison, who again was the Alex, do you have a, a twitch there? Oh no. Um, it, and all that to say, they released a couple of good singles. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. All right then. Rob has the capability of there you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Perfect. Yeah. You're stupid. I don't I like always it. I, I like volume three as well. And I listen to it from, from not as much as volume one, but yeah, I always think to myself, what well, would have been because I've read that after Orbison died, they were talking about having Del Shannon, Del Shannon. Yeah. replace him. And then Del Shannon died. I go, man, even with Del Shannon in the group, that would have been pretty fucking spectacular. Yeah. Yeah. And just like, I mean, cause like, again, this is like the little mini box set and it came with the DVD about like how they formed. And it was like, what, like, Tom Petty needed a guitar that was at George Harrison's house. He saw Jeff Lynn at a stoplight, which is how he initially yeah. met Jeff Lynn for Full Moon Fever. Um, and, you know, then they're like, you know, oh, Bob Dylan has a studio. Let's go to Bob Dylan's house. And didn't George just go, hey, here's the song I'm working on. What do you think? And that's Yeah, it was a B-side. It was, yeah. was going to be a B-side to a George Harrison single, which obviously George Harrison at that time was not exactly the top of his game in terms of popularity. Um, but then they're like, you know, because like all these people were already getting in, involved with that with that song with "Handle with Care," and then they're like, "This Jeff Lynne was like, this is too good to be a, a, a B side to a random song by George Harrison." So then, I mean, obviously George was the one that was holding them back from touring. Um, but you know, I feel like I feel like the rest of them might have done something because I think they originally talked like if they were to tour when they had the initial talks, they would do little mini sets of their own stuff and then come together and do the Wilbury stuff to close it or like to open it and close it. Well, according to Alex, they only had a couple of singles, so they would have had to have relied on the rest of their music somehow. Yeah, just some cover songs. Yeah. Yeah. It's not prog, so what does he know? <laughs> right. I guess we gotta ring the elephant in the room. Dark Side of the Moon. Never heard. I think of that it. was all too obvious. Did any of us bother to show Dark Side of the Moon? We're too no. hipster. I have an yeah. alternate. Bright Side of the Sun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, let's see what Alex has. 
Well, I was I was gonna show Dark Side of the Moon, but I, I'm gonna just go fuck myself. Um, <laughs> show it. I want to hear you talk about it. It's the greatest want, album ever. Let's all talk me. about it. No, no, greatest album ever is you know traveling buttholes, traveling uh, dingleberries, buttholes. traveling on, dingleberries. That's right. Alex. They had a really good hit single called uh, Mexican uh, Testicle Alex, do Eclipse. Love, do you love this album? <laughs> Mexican Testicle I was, Eclipse. I will tell you, uh, Jason, that is that is the album that I think genuinely is as good as everyone says it is. I will say that. Yes. That's all I wanted, some validation from the man. I, I still, it's, I, that is now, I've heard it a million times. I don't get tired of it. Thank if you. you're on YouTube for validation, you got bigger problems. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, I got a lot of big problems. <laughs> yeah, so is there? Where is there any start? Okay. Yeah. Is there anybody? But you do have four hundred and fifty nine, four hundred and forty nine subscribers. Yeah, so don't add ten not. where they don't belong, Rob. Sorry. You should be sorry. You All have right. the floor, sir. Let's get into <laughs> let's get into some records that are not and some artists that are not shown ever in the VC, and especially not amongst these people. Um, no, what are we hold on. Um, that sounds didn't you say so you're not sloppy. available next week? This is looking better and better. <laughs> I hope you're happy with that, Rob. <laughs> he well, as Rob said, I'm a prog guy, someone's got to carry it around here. You know, sometimes it's about, um, well, I don't know what it's about. The point is, uh, you know, prog was a very popular thing in the 70s, and he obviously had like the big four. Um, and, but my thing is like, there were a number of prog bands that I say that were in like that second or third tier that I think deserve just as much, if not more credit than sort of the big, the big four. Um, but, uh, one of those I, is one of my favorite bands. I mean, I prefer this band a, a, above a lot of those other sort of quote unquote bigger prog bands. And that band might have the worst name ever, but that's okay. And this might be one of the worst album covers ever, and that's okay. And I'm looking at my boy Jason because he loves when I talk about that dumb looking camel. All right, let's talk about that dumb looking camel. <laughs> now, this one, this is Camel. Camel is a British oh. prog band. Uh, this is their fourth album called Moon Madness, and that there is a camel in a mo fucking astronaut. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty cool. I'll that give you that. Crazy. I like that. You cannot tell that there be a camel looking like Neil Armstrong. So, um, yeah, a mood and madness. Obviously, just the, the toll, the, the side of it all. There are. I love this album. There are days this is my favorite. Um, they, you know, camels <coughs> because they were not nearly as aggressive as bands like King Crimson or Yes. Um, there was to me they perfected the the art of. So melody, it's more. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Continue. Hey, I, I'm trying. I'm really trying. Um, they they took a significantly more melodic uh, approach to progressive rock. It was about uh, it was about these instrumental passages that had hooks to them. It wasn't about how fast they could play. Or weird time signatures. Um, it was definitely just a different approach at the time. I, I don't think the name of the band helped them at all, um, personally, as much as we left. First of all, that camel got back. Let's talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but also, I, you know, if people are curious and they're like, I like, I, I'm curious on progressive rock, but I don't know about all those weird, you know, self indulgent, pretentious, widdly widdlies, all that kind of stuff. I think Camel's a good place to start because it, it is significantly more focused on melody, instrumental passages, um, more almost soundtrack driven type material um, than other stuff. So this is Moon Madness. And I would say if you were looking for a um, song on here to sample, if you will, it would be Lunar Sea, another spacey uh, sort of reference, Lunar Sea. Yes, Rob, you have a question, sir. I, I do have a question. If it was a two hump camel, would they have to redesign the spacesuit? <laughs> Nothing. Valid question. It is hump day after all. Nice job. If we man. were if you were a two hump camel, would we have to redesign that ass? <laughs> you don't even know what my ass looks like. 
Can we see? I can take a guess there, baby back, okay? Ooh. <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> well, <laughs> see, what Joe can we do Joe's to Alex like, here? Can we, uh, we here? <laughs> kick him from the studio? No, we won't do that. <laughs> All right, keep going. Thing. I was just I wanted to bring some seriousness to the discussion, so I'm sorry. Would you do have more, or is it my turn now? Oh no, I mean I got I got a lot more, but well, I'm going to go next. Yeah, you are. <clears throat> I am going to do. Oh, I'm going to do this. <clears throat> This has incredible cover artwork. <clears throat> Look at this beautiful thing. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. You lose. <laughs> Joe, Joe had the best one. <clears throat> so, this is called Paperback Records. Sorry, Paper Bag Records versus the rise and fall of Ziggy Stardust and Spiders from Mars. I do not have the David Bowie album. The aforementioned Ziggy Stardust, because I'm not a big David Bowie fan. Ooh. Listen, respect him. It just, you know, I doesn't, you know, get me excited. But this was a promo that was that I received on the 10th anniversary of Paper Bag Records because I bought a lot of stuff from them. And this is all the artists on their label. Each artist would take a song and they covered Ziggy Stardust in its entirety. And obviously, that is space theme because Ziggy Stardust is, you know, a alien uh, you know, messiah or whatever you want to call it that has come to Earth or whatever. So, I mean, it's kind of space themed. It's not, if I had the David Bowie one, I would show the David Bowie one, but I don't. So, I'm showing <laughs> this obscure promo. So, there you I love it. I actually, so I listened to this the other night, not knowing what their theme was. Oh, today, let me, but... let, let, here you go. Hold on. There we go. I gotta say that man, is the album I would have shown if I had it. Yes, I gotta say, man, like this, like I, I've just I would say in the last six months I started collecting some Bowie stuff. All I knew about, you know, David Bowie is interesting because for me because I never I knew some like major hits. Then he died, and everyone <laughs> was really upset, and so I kind of jumped on the bandwagon in the sense of I need to know more about this guy. And you know, a few months passed, and all of a sudden, I came across a collection that had a lot of Bowie. So I took a lot of Bowie home, and I kind of went through. I have about five or six albums. This is fantastic. This is a really friggin' great listen, start to finish. I got to say, um, Starman is obviously very relevant tonight. Um, Lady Stardust, Ziggy, like I don't know. There's a lot on here, but I got to say, like that album is. I would say it's probably my favorite Bowie album, but I, you know, Diamond Dog's pretty good too. I don't have all of them by any stretch, but like when I put that on the other night, start to finish, I forgot how freaking good that was of a listen. I was like super impressed, and I feel bad. Like you know, I, I hate being the bandwagon guy. Like the guy dies, oh, I better get into him. That wasn't the intention, right? But it's a good reason. Like what you know, you don't need a reason. You just want to follow, get into an artist, you get into an artist. And uh, sure enough, I missed the boat when he was alive, but I'm diving deep now. And everything I've heard is like, this guy was a freaking genius. Like he was different. He was unique. He had good people around him to help him make great music. And uh, yeah, he, is, he had a vision for sure. And I would tell you, Jason, no, that, not that it's a shame thing, but no shame at all that that for Ziggy, that seems to be the obvious pick, but most of the time it's the right pick. You know, it's like dark side. It's like, that, yeah. that's the obvious pick but that's okay like that and of course me too i mean what a perfect storytelling concept record that would not fall in like a prog boat right but i mean it is such a um just a great storytelling concept record i love uh yeah. i love that album I when i put that on the other day i was like this is a shame that it's not like one of my regulars which i'm about to show here now but like I was like, holy shit, like I gotta give this a lot more love than it gets. So anyone out there, you haven't listened to Ziggy, get in like put it on. So Jay, the gator. So Jake to circle back to this paper bag records cover album. Guess who covers Starman? The rural Alberta advantage. <laughs> the rag. That we just you just asked about five minutes ago. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. <laughs> Sam making a fucking period joke on Rob's stream. It's never going to be the end of it. I just ignore him. <laughs> Good to see you. That's some big there, Jason. 
We're just gonna leave Jason nice and big. Yeah, fuck off. Get out. <laughs> yeah. Imagine the people watching this on their seventy-two inch TVs. Big old Jason up there. That's a shame. I, I feel bad for them. <laughs> That's a shame. That's yeah. a shame. That's a shame. <laughs> I don't even know who's up next. Who's up next? Joe. Joe. Come on, Joe. Yeah. Hey, hey, let's review a Joe's pick. Joe's pick oh, is Jason, actually like, good. Took Joe's two actually nailed the theme. He's got the shirt. He's got wicked records that are obviously very space oriented. Don't let us down, Joe. What is next? Get us back on track, Joe. Yeah. Okay, we're we're well, struggling here, man. I'm not sure uh, if Sam and Alex will know these guys, but the fellow Canucks in the room will. One of my favorite debut albums and one of the most solid side A's from a Canadian band from the 70s ever, and it's Prism. So Spaceship Superstar and Take Me to the Captain. You get them both on there. Hell yeah. Um, Spaceship I, I Superstar. Oh, my God. Right? Oh. And, you, and you think about it, and it's like, oh, he's talking to a captain of a boat, but he's not. He's talking to the captain of the spaceship. It's kind of like it's kind of like Come Sail Away. It's got a twist at the end, mm. and then Klaatu and the Carpenters had calling occupants. So it was all kind of you know you think they're spaceships or you think they're captains of boats, and then they're spacemen and things like that. So, but um, again, uh, for the Canadians and you guys are younger than me, but still, spaceship super spaceship superstar open soul surgery. It's over and take me to the captain. So that's a pretty damn solid. That's that's four classic staples of Canadian rock radio. And that's just the first side. So yeah, good stuff. And you know, and I thought fit with the space theme. Joe, Joe, do you know prism? Well, like, I don't know shit about prism, but I see their albums all the time everywhere. Yeah. Um, like, what? what is their best album? Like, what is well, like their commercially that, that's, most that's, appealing album? That's their best album. And then Armageddon is probably their their biggest or whatever, because that was always what they opened their show with. And a lot of people knew that. Um, it's unfortunate. I, I don't know. Uh, Ron Tabak, the lead singer from the first, I think, four albums, uh, including up into Young and Restless, if I remember correctly, uh, he passed away in a bike accident, like a pedal bike accident. He wasn't wearing his helmet, fell off, wasn't like wasn't hammered, wasn't any of that, just fell off his bike and cracked his head on the sidewalk and passed away. So a bit of a shame because he was he was a great voice, a great voice. Um, the guitar player, uh, whose name escapes me right now has kind of taken the mantle. They're still out touring. They're still doing the Canadian bar scene and the Canadian, you know, summer festival scene and things like that. And um, yeah, it's just really, really good. Um, again, this this one's this one's my favorite, but Armageddon's pretty good. Um, even Young and Restless, it, it's solid. It stayed solid for about the first four or five. I think if you picked up any of those, you, you wouldn't have a problem if you're a fan of what you know of them. I think if you got those, you'd be all right. Yeah, it's funny. I feel bad. Like, I see them and I'm all, like, yeah, I don't have a lot of, I don't have a record store here, but there's a local store that carries a bunch of used vinyl. It's obviously not as gig. He just sort of carries it anyway. And, uh, and uh, I see prison all the time and I never yeah. know what one to get. It's always cheap too because it's, you know, it's not like a, you know, a mainstay of someone's collection, but yeah, yeah. maybe I'll have to pick one up, I guess. Or it was always, it was, it, but. Yeah, it's always plentiful, right? It's like finding Trooper yeah. albums or, yeah, you know, exactly. all, those, all those Canadian bands in the 70s. They sold a shitload of records, right? I mean, Rush sold a lot of records. Trooper sold a lot of records. Prism sold a lot of records. Streetheart sold a lot of records. So they're out Street there oh, man, and they're easy man. to find. Yeah. Can't, can't go wrong with Streetheart either. So, um, yeah. Anyway, Prism and uh, self-titled. It's good. It's great, actually. That's awesome. Nice. I see those I'll records out sometimes. I never knew anything about Prism. Yeah. Speaking of Canadian bands, Alex, I'm going to your record show this weekend, and I'm going to look for some Max Webster for you. Now we're talking. Now Absolutely. we're talking, Rob. Keep my eyes out. Yo, Check out those comments there. We got a good one here from Vaginal's got a question for Sam. <laughs> This is so good. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Come on, Sam. Come on, Sam. Please. Do I was thinking about it too because it, it, they keep uh, hiding me with the with the logo here. 
Wyoming Dave's in the house. Hey, Wyoming oh, is that Dave. the joke? Is that it's? I was over the stream yard. That yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any <laughs> quack? Don't let him know by prison. No way. I didn't you know like that. A pig. Dave bringing in, Dave bringing in the trivia heat here. Right on. Right Dave's now, always, first more of all, stuff Dave's always people. bringing in the heat. Jason, yeah. he knows his stuff. He does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they were uh, they were buddies with. Uh, geez, who was the Playboy playmate that got murdered? What was her name? Who? Does that ring a bell? No. Anyway, they were uh, friends. They were friends with her, and uh, so they they've got a song called "Cover Girl," which is about that. So, uh, damn it, my age is coming through tonight. I can't remember what uh, what her name was, but anyway, uh, it's all good stuff. If you like, I said, if you hear a Prism song, they don't stray very far. They've got some ballads, They're like April Wine. Same thing, you know. They've got oh, rock yeah. and roll. They could have a greatest hits of rock, heavy rock songs, or faster rock songs. They could have a ballads hit uh, album as well. So it's Jason's turn, and he just walks away. And he just walked away. He's yeah, maybe people. he's going to get some prism. <laughs> You're looking for uh, Sorry, Mac Webster, did you say, Alex? Good stuff. Good stuff. I've got yeah, all no, of it. It's the thing. It's like I know there are probably a plenty up there. I've never seen Max Webster here in the states. And, and I will say this, too, I, and, and that is me looking through both the M's and the W's. Um, <laughs> just in case, yeah. Just in case, you know, it's one of those, you know, it's like an Alice Cooper situation. Is that an A or a C? But, um, yeah. I, they're, I, they're in every $5 bin and $2 bin and well, every record store and every record show you go to. Well, good. Then you should be able to find me that discography to less than 20 boners there, Rob. Uh, yeah. Well, let's, I'll see what I can work out for you. <laughs> That's right. <You're> <laughs> vacations. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right, Jason, All right. what do you got? Okay, I think I showed this album before. If I don't show it, if I haven't shown it before, it's definitely on like the Jason Heavy Rotation album fucking thing here. Third studio album, 1969. Um, <coughs> this this band I ignored because the their later hits had too much radio play. I didn't really care for them. I think lead singer, the lead guy, was a bit of a. I don't, I don't know if there's any truth to it. I think he was a bit of an asshole. Maybe, maybe not. It could be way off on that. I don't know. But I was never into them until, and I've said this before somewhere, if not on a video, then on a live stream, that uh, I was watching a video by Mazzy, and Mazzy said, check this guy's albums out, but check out the early stuff. And that's the Steve Miller band, and that is Brave New World, which is, like, I got to say, maybe a Firebox album for me. Like, this album gets a lot of play here. And, of course, I'm talking about the song Space Cowboy. Mm. so this is the first album without boss gags in it this is a glenn johns produced album and i, I that doesn't say much to glenn johns touched a lot of things but and played a lot yeah, yeah anyway. I, I did a lot of i did a lot of producing too yeah, yeah I did a lot anyway, of so, <laughs> thank you <laughs> keep talking <laughs> I can't. anyway <laughs> if anyone out if anyone out there knows Steve Miller band, well you do know it, but all you know is the album The Joker and the song The Joker, which he references the term Space Cowboy. So, the first song of the song. Some people call me the Space Cowboy. That's nineteen seventy three. So that's you know, four or so years later that he references the song. But anyway, on this album there's a lot of great songs. The whole album's great. Space Cowboy is one of the best. My Dark Hour is another fantastic song, and we'll throw that in there because when the eclipse happens, it's dark. Who gives a shit, right? But the uh, My Dark Owl, my, who can, yeah, Rob, you're running <laughs> off of me. Who gives a oh, shit? yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> my Dark Hour is a great song. Does anyone on the panel know the little tidbit about My Dark Hour? It's who just called Life guest, for Me. Who is the guest vocalist on the background vocalist on My Dark Hour? Is friggin' Paul would McCartney. Be Paul McCartney, okay. so he's in this, I guess, I was just trying to look this up here. I didn't get a chance to read it all, but I think the studio had the Beatles, and the Beatles weren't all there that day. Glenn's like, hey, Paul, come on over here, hang out with Steve, let's do a song or whatever. So he's credited as Paul something else on the album, not, not Paul McCartney, but anyway, in the background, and the uh, towards the end of the song, when there's another a second vocalist, you can hear someone else, and I guess that's McCartney, but anyway, great album. What year is that? 68? 69. So. Uh, thank you, Rob. 
No. That's awesome. Good job, Rob. No, yeah, I saw, I saw Steve Miller band in 2019, and he did Space Cowboy, and I mean, he's one of those guys too. Like his voice now is it's it's great. Like I mean, it's just really it, it's, it's held up so well. Um, and I remember that being a, a standout track from that night too. Actually, Marty Stewart was the opener um, on like the super hot day in July, but um, that was like <laughs> a killer show. And Steve Miller, um, I was talking earlier about that, like, that that sitar thing. He played one of those guitars that night. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. How, okay. Yeah, how Joe you, is never going to come you, back again. Host, Y'all know that, Rob, right? When you're, so, uh, when you're hosting StreamYard, like I know Chance does this too. Like, how many different <laughs> sound effects do you have access to? Like, is this like part of the program? You get like 24 friggin' ridiculous things you can do. Chance pays for StreamYard. I just use the free version and it comes with like 10 of them, but you can add your own. So I just added this while we were talking. <laughs> I had a duck. Vagina, vagina is very happy. Plus, don't forget, I also have the Stumpus sound effect as well, which everybody loves. What is that one? Remember Stumpus? Oh, plug your ears, everybody. Here it comes. Oh, gosh. Here it comes. Mm. Plug your ears. <laughs> I remember that. That was a while ago. That was, yeah. Yep. Nice. Sorry, I got off track there. Sam, I, all good. That the Walnut good. Gallery wanted some duck quacking, so I got you some duck quacking. Well, now you get the full duck because here I come. Oh, hold on. Here we go. Hold on. Let me we can be here, Sam. All right. Um, this is an album, and people that follow me online know that like I was listening to like a lot of like eclipse based albums around the eclipse. Um and this is one that I, I wasn't even intending to be an Eclipse album, but then it, like the very first song on here was a song called Bad Side of the Moon by Mr. Elton John on his um, a good album. fantastic live album. If you don't know this album, this needs to be up there with the best live albums of all time. This is 11 17 70. Obviously, in the UK, it was 17 11 70. But this is. It's the Elton John trio. It's him with D. Murray on bass, Nigel Olsen on um, drums, and both of them are giving background vocals as well. The finale of this album um, is just fantastic, but he sings the song Bad Side of the Moon. Um, just a fantastic, fantastic track. Um, again, him and Nigel and D. Murray. But he also does um, a version of Honky Tonk Women by the Rolling Stones. He does um, his songs Amarina from um, Tumbleweed Connection. Take Me to the Pilot, which is, if, again, a fantastic version of Take Me to the Pilot. So Possibly good. top two or three Elton John song of all time for me. For me yeah. um, then he does 60 Years On. Fantastic vocal. Um, um, Can I Put You On? And then the, the it's only seven tracks, but the seventh track is 18 minutes long, 18 and a half minutes long, which is Burn Down the Mission. Well, again, another favorite Elton John tune. But he also includes the songs My Baby Left Me and then Get Back by the Beatles, which had just come out earlier in the year um on the uh as a single so that was a fairly new beatles song obviously they had already broken up by this point but um this is a, just a fantastic album like i said the song bad side of the moon is a great opener um i think there were only like 150 people in the audience because it was it was done to, for a, a radio broadcast um and so it was a it was a radio audience that was there again very very stripped back just elton on piano bass with d murray and then nigel Olson on the drums Elton's voice is fantastic. It's produced by um, Gus Dudgeon, who who did a ton of a ton of stuff um, during the seventies. Um, again, my, my my dad really got me into this album, but um, yeah, just a, again, fantastic rock and album. It's it's well worth a listen, even if you don't. Like that. <laughs> it's a different Elton John. It's not the produced Elton John from like you know Goodbye Yellow Brick Road or, or you know Captain Fantastic. Um, so yeah, eleven seventeen seventy. Um, Bad Side of the Moon, the opening track. So check it out. It is awesome. And that is a that is a rock and roll fucking record, dude. Yes, it is. Jason, do you know this album? Do not. You need I know very yes. little about Mr. Elton John. Well, this is a this will get you into the rock, the rocking side of Elton. It's fantastic. Write it down. Write it down, tattoo it. You know. I was supposed to uh I was supposed to give a link to the show that my lovely wife could watch. 
and she'd be super impressed that we've talked about her two main guys, which are David Bowie and Elton John. So oh, right on. Yeah, we have we have every David Bowie and we have every Elton John album, which I don't have a problem with. And I've seen Elton a number of times and just solid. But yeah, Sam, that is a that is a fantastic and a little bit of a departure if you just know, you know, Crocodile Rock and 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 the Lion King stuff. I mean, I know that's not us here, but yeah. for those that know that type of Elton John stuff, that that's worth a that's worth a a listen, a couple of listens at least. Yeah, because I mean, you don't really have like you know, you don't have the Elton John hits like any of like the hits that you hear on the radio, like you know, your songs not on here, any of that stuff. And obviously, this is you know, he had put out the first three albums, I guess, um, Empty Sky, Elton John, and Tumbleweed Connection, or he was just about to put out Tumbleweed Connection. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, it's awesome. That's why he's got, you know, it's seven tracks and he's doing two covers. <laughs> yeah. Um, on here. yeah. So, um, yeah, check it out. It is awesome. Alex, yep. what you got? All right. Um, let's see. What do I want to do this time? Um, you know, I'll show this. So I, I guess it was a couple of uh, weeks ago we did I mean, it was last. Who cares? We were, we were diving into like some sh- sub genres, right? Um, yeah. In voice, and in one of the records, uh, or one of the genres I was talking about was jazz fusion. So, one to bust out one of the jazz fusion records. Now, people are intimidated by jazz fusion, or you don't know where to start. I could not recommend this album enough. Um, actually, showed him a little bit because he was featured, I guess, on two of the records that I showed um, last week: the Miles Davis record as well as the <laughs> Mahavishnu Orchestra record. But to me, this is his third record. This is a drummer, one of my favorite jazz fusion drummers of all time. This record is funky. It's hard rock. It's bopping. It is all of the things. Uh, and it's got a space theme and a space title. And all the songs are called something spacey. And that is Total Eclipse from Billy Motherfucking Cobbin. This is like... <laughs> I guess I've seen before. If, if, if jazz fusion is something that you are maybe interested in dabbling in, I think this is a great place to start. It's super accessible. It's not weird. It's not out there. It is funky. There's heavy guitar ripping. It's it's just it's it's jammy. It it's got all that stuff that I think uh, a lot of people would like from a classic standpoint. So um, yeah, his third technically. Um, Spectrum of Crosswinds came before this. This is uh, Total Eclipse, an absolute banger from 1974 from Billy Cobbin. Killer lineup for any of the jazz cats out there. You got the Brecker brothers. They're always ripping. John Abercrombie, who's played with everybody, he's playing on guitar. Um, of course, Billy Cobbin ripping on drums. So uh, had to show us one. Total Eclipse, and look what it's actually showing. No way. Is that solar are you, are you or lunar? To... Or testicle. Or <laughs> Mexico. Yeah, definitely a, a what Jason said. And... No, no. But it's also cool too. You know, you got like the name of these uh tracks. Solarization kicks it off, which is an eleven minute song. Um, followed by Lunar Pucians, Total Eclipse, Bandits, Moon Germs, the Moon Made of Green Cheese, Sea of Tranquility, and Last Frontier. So Spacey all the way, Total Eclipse, and a damn good funky jazzy fusion record. So good. Get that. I haven't listened to that Betker Brothers that I picked up the other day yet. Heavy metal bebop, but I will. Hell yeah. It's awesome. I love it. Good. I guess that means I'm up, right? Sure does. All right. I'm going to show a couple rapid fire here. Because I don't have anything substantial to say about either of them. But I'm going to show them. Space theme. Return of Saturn by No Doubt. Oh my god, wow. I mean, there's nothing spacey about any of these songs. And there's no songs about space. But it is called Return of Saturn. And there is a telescope. And there is a Saturn-esque. Sure artistic depiction on the wall. So we're going to call this kind of spacey themed. That's one. And the other one I'm going to show is an album I really wish I liked, but I don't. But you'll see why when you look at the cover, why I'm showing this. Oh, there you go. I mean, that's pretty eclipsy looking. Abba's Voyage. Uh-huh. I love Abba. 
uh, just could not get into this record. And I think you've heard this before, right, Sam? Yeah, I have it. On what do you CD. think of it? What do you think of it? It's good. It's not. Um, it's it's not upbeat. It's it's a right. Lot of- it's ballady. I mean, they, yeah, they, yeah. vocally they sound great. I mean, it's not like you know, like they've lost vocals necessarily. I mean, they're on their seventies, but it yeah, just I mean, didn't it, have the punch that their earlier stuff did. And the like, the best song on that album was the one that dated back to the seventies, right? Yeah. yeah. And I thought maybe it was just I had set my expectations too high, waiting forty, 40 years, years for a reunion. Yeah. But only that was it. I just the music's a little <coughs> sorry, cold. Yeah. The music's just Abbas Poppy, and yeah. this is just a little too little too mellow for me. But yeah, I mean, I mean there there's a good Eclipse cover, right? So there you go. Yeah, Voyage. If it would have came, if it would have came closer to, I guess <laughs> the '80s, maybe if like if it would have been an album that they would have just done a long time ago, maybe we would have uh, enjoyed it more. Because I'm in the same camp where I was really looking forward to it. <clears throat> And then just was let down. Unfortunately, I mean, I didn't listen to it that often. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a grow on you. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe it could could be a grower. I mean, Bjorn and Benny wrote some of the greatest pop songs ever. The guys are incredible, great producers. I just, it was lacking. So, exactly. Yeah. Yep. All right. All right. Let me look at a few comments here. Uh... April Wine does a great cover of Bad Side. Yep. Uh, Zach, happy hey, Wednesday night from San Antonio, Texas. How you doing, sir? Mo prayer. Bad Moon Rise. I didn't even think about oh, that for one. For God's like, sake. How do we forget I've that? I've seen a bad moon no rising. Let me grab a guitar. I'll play that right for you right now. Yes. There's a bathroom on the right. There's a I bathroom on the right. Rob absolutely. <laughs> I listened to Moonshot the other day. Sadly, I've seen copy of that Abba selling for nine bucks. Yeah, sadly, I bought it at full price when it came out. So stupid me. That's a shame. All right, I uh, guess we got time for one more go around. Just like a twenty-five minutes. Yeah, top of the pops. Top of the pops. All right, so that means that uh, Joe's first again. All right, I pull. I got two more pulled out, so I'll show them both, and I won't talk about either of them a whole bunch. But of course. <laughs> This one had to uh, had to make an appearance. Maybe not necessarily this one, but this guy, and that is, of course, the Space Ace Ace Freely. He got mentioned <laughs> earlier. I think it was in the comment, but Freely's comment. It's good stuff. Anton Figs on the drums. It's good. It's not Kiss, um, and it's not Ace's best work, but it's still pretty cool. Uh, the new one, Ten Thousand Volts, is okay. It's kind of growing on me a little bit. Uh, Ace was never as good on his own as he was in kiss, but still good stuff. So I like it. And uh, I thought it was kind of fitting. I know it was an eclipse, not a comment, but you know, you guys get the gist. And the other one, spacey. yeah, it's still spacey. And the other one, and this one's a bit of a stretch and I started with the soundtrack. I had one in the middle, so I'm going to end with one as well, but this is, uh, this is the soundtrack or more so uh, the score to John Carpenter's the thing. So, you know, I, again, I don't know for sure that it fits, but I'm going to make it fit because the thing was from outer space or was it? But anyway, um, <laughs> cool album. Uh, again, I think if you if you enjoy a little bit of herb with it, not that I do, but if you do, it's it's kind of cool. And it's got the score and then it's got some other stuff. And, uh, you know, it, it's kind of it's got some spacey spacey uh colored vinyl as well and that so yeah it's just uh it's cool it's one of those soundtracks i don't do a lot uh or not not soundtrack per se as much again as a score more than anything i don't do a lot of them i've got a really good one by carpenter of halloween which is which is great and uh hopefully in the next couple of weeks it's supposed to be in the mail is the soundtrack to godzilla minus one which uh, again, not so much a soundtrack as much as a score, and I just want it for the cover. I just want the cover of the Godzilla on the cover, but the rest is going to be pretty cool as well. Uh, so yeah, so there's there's a couple of and Alex, you've seen the thing, right? Oh yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, <laughs> good. That's good. But uh, yeah, I thought that one kind of fit in for those that haven't seen the thing. John Carpenter's the thing. Outstanding, great. 
they call it a horror and it kind of, I mean, it gets lumped in that way. It's more science fiction than anything, but just because of the John Carpenter thing, it kind of gets lumped in as a horror movie. But uh, I remember seeing that in the uh, in the theater forever ago. One of the greatest lines ever in a movie, <coughs> when the head grows the legs, spoiler alert, and he goes, you got to be fucking kidding me. It's still <laughs> one of my favorite lines. So anyway, there, and I'll put that back together after and stop screwing around with it. But uh, again, great, uh, great score. Uh, good one to put on some colored lights and and uh, and just sit there and listen to it and enjoy it. And it's very good. Uh, very good. I, I nice highly good. recommend. It's good. Nice job, Joe. Thanks. In, in, in Nino Morricone, which we all know from the good, the bad and the ugly yeah. and yeah. all of that stuff. Right. He's been he's been doing it. He, he's not as well known as John Williams, but he's as talented as John Williams. So I think. done nice all right jason what is the closest closest galaxy to our milky way the snickers bar andromeda andromeda let's go <laughs> alex knew alex knew right away oh nobel great nobel. uh so four min 66 this album's from 69 this I obviously found out through uh, you know one of Dylan's many videos at Noble Records, streamed it, loved it, bought it right away. Uh, fantastic album! Like everything this guy releases, I got to say I'm a total fanboy of this this channel and uh, and what he puts out. I don't I have I have uh, four or five of his exclusives now. I love every one of them. I played Growers of Mushrooms yesterday twice in a row. It's so freaking fantastic. I haven't put this on in a little while. Maybe I'll put this on later tonight. But couldn't get more spacey than the name of our closest galaxy, Andromeda. So late 60s, <laughs> early 70s, psych hard rock kind of stuff. Great album. Lesser known stuff, but uh, definitely worth uh, checking out. I'm not sure if it's streaming or if the. I'm sure you can find the album rip on YouTube, but... Uh, Andromeda, great psych rock stuff. Is that a? Uh, oh, it's almost like yellow vinyl. Yeah, it's on the yellow. I think he's got he's got that uh, YouTube channel where he, or is it, uh, is it a YouTube channel besides his main one where yep. he puts that stuff up? Or yeah, I mean, sometimes like he takes a... it down after he brings the vinyl out, though. But yeah, I hope so. Yeah, that'd be a good business move. Uh, find this record is another like on, right. on uh, Instagram. He's got the find this record thing. That's it. It's regular thing. But the find this record on YouTube. Yeah, he'll like just rip the album and put it out there for everyone to hear. So like, I've learned so much from just like watching his stuff about like, hey, check this shit out. Like, and it's just funny. Eh? Like, you know, I'm definitely my wheelhouse is or the stuff I enjoy anyway is, you know, late 60s, early 70s. And it's funny how many friggin' bands are out there that because everyone was putting out rock albums, right? And there's so much that just did not hit the mainstream, just you know by happenstance or luck or whatever have you. And and uh, so it's kind of cool that someone else is out there. I'm sure there's other other people doing the same thing that are out there trying to get the word out on different artists that never quite made it big. But uh, anyway, that's a great example of a band that didn't make it big that still had some fantastic stuff. Can you show the vinyl again? Huh? Is is that, is that a vinyl storage solutions inner sleeve? All my sleeves are vinyl storage solutions. People should check out vinyl storage solutions.ca <laughs> and use promo code Northern Ten to receive ten percent off your order. I get that. Is, is there I get... another YouTube channel that also has a promo code? What would that be? <laughs> there is, but I want the commission check. So <laughs> yeah. screw them. I get that five dollar uh, Amazon inner sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, you're up, Sam. You got yeah, something? cheers. Um, yeah, I'll um, I guess this is the last round. I'll, I'll shoot through these three that I have. Um, so <laughs> this is this is one that I've shown before. Um, this is the album Shadows in the Night by Bob Dylan. Um, this came out <laughs> in 2015. Um, it was the first of his three um, standards albums where he covered standards by you know Sinatra. Um, on the first two and the, and the third, he kind of did just a, a wide array of, of standard songs. But he does the song on here called Full Moon and Empty Arms, a absolutely gorgeous song. I listened to this album the other day, and all these albums are like 33 minutes. I think he intentionally made them all 33 minutes. Um, 
just for you know a solid running time on vinyl. And I, I do have the vinyl, but again, I was very very lazy. Um, but again, it's it's Dylan doing doing the standards, but he he had really worked on his vocals for for these records. Like he, I think he completely had stopped smoking like anything, cigars, cigarettes, like whatever he was doing. He just completely stopped. Um, he was kind of turning over to try to re re grow his voice back essentially. And it's still, it's one of those things where like these albums continue to make him a stronger singer even today, because the album before this, which was called Tempest from 2012 was his last original album up until 20, uh, 2021's Rough and Rowdy Ways, um, which he just finished that tour up a couple nights ago in Texas. Um, but he, he used the vocal exercises that he was doing for this album for this uh, follow-up album, which is called Fallen Angels, and then the triple album called Triplicate. So he essentially did five albums worth of this material, um, worked on his vocals, and it again, it did wonders for his singing. Um, but again, there's th that song, Full Moon and Empty Arms. Um, I also could have chosen, he does the song, That Lucky Old Son, um, which is a um, just a, one, of those, one of those classic standards that you hear all the time. Um, he does autumn leaves on here, which is, which is a, another um, favorite jazz cover. Um, the night we called it a day, just great stuff on here. And again, I, if you like that kind of stuff, he does it, but he does it in his way where he's not doing like the, you know, like the schmaltzy, like big band kind of stuff. It's, it's, it's sparser with like the pedal steel guitar <clears throat> rushes on the percussion, just very, very like smokehouse kind of jazz club feel. It's really, really a cool, a cool record. It's a mood record. Um, but I, I absolutely love it. So Shadows in the Night, I'm going to show that. And then really quickly, just I'll show a couple here. Um, I talk about this album all the time, Closing Time by Tom Waits. Um, I'm going to go with the album, I mean, the song Grapefruit Moon. Um, talking to you, Alex. I know you like this album. Um, so just, again, a beautiful song. I listen to it a lot. I mean, anytime that there's any kind of like, you know, like cool looking moon outside, I'll always start singing Grapefruit Moon by Tom Waits. So from Closing Time, I'm going to go with that. That's and no this, moon. That's a space station. What's that? I said that's no moon. That's a space station. Oh, there you go. That's a space station. Yeah. Sure. Um, and then lastly, I'm going to go with uh, Amos Lee. This is his album called My Ideal, which is a reinterpretation of um, the Chet Baker Sings album. Which again, you know, Chet Baker, the famous um, trumpeteer, he had albums where he would sing. He kind of had this very laid back, smoky kind of voice. And so Amos Lee, again, a modern singer. Um, kind of in the jazzy pop vein um, did a tribute to him. But there's a song on here called Look for the Silver Lining where he's talking about, um, you know, where the clouds appear in the blue. Like it, he, he's talking about, you know, trying to find the sunny side of life. That's kind of like the, the co um, the co title with that. But this is a really cool reinterpretation. Again, you got to like Chet Baker. Um, he pretty much sticks to the original arrangements on here. Just again, it's with Amos Lee's voice. But um, yeah, I'm gonna go with "Look for the Silver Lining." Um, really good stuff. Um, he also does a version of "My Funny Valentine," which is probably the most famous song on here. But um, yeah, there are my, there are the last three that I had. So yeah, all right, Alex. All right, gonna do a quick fire round here uh, and go through the ones that I pulled because I just want to bring light to some of these. Um, what I would for, I, I guess I talked a little bit about progressive rock earlier, you know, the <clears throat> mystery. Of it's a thing now. I can't help it. That Yeah. Um, <clears throat> history, I guess, of progressive rock. I mean, it's a little bit more deep than this, but you would think about it, you know, kind of reached its <laughs> peak in the um, early to mid 70s, mostly European or in British bands. Um, in the early 80s sort of became this new term called neo prog. Um, but then there was kind of a third wave in the 90s with a number of different bands across a number of different countries. But in terms of American bands, purely progressive rock in the 90s, um, you don't get much bigger than a band called Spock's Beard. Um, and this is their uh, debut album called The Light. Um, Spock's Beard, I mean, very Genesis kind of influence. This was led up by Neil Morse. I've talked about Neil Morse before a bunch of times, but this is really his band. He left this band in the early uh, 2000s to pursue some solo stuff, but this is as good as like 90s third wave prog as you can get. <laughs> Neil, uh, sorry. <laughs> Spock's beard with the light. Um, classic 70s progressive hard rock band from um, 
Uh, the Netherlands. No? Yes. Um, Netherlands. If you're from the Netherlands, you're Dutch, <laughs> right? Dutch people are from the Netherlands? Yes. Good. All right. How about we talk about that then with Golden Earring? I'm going to show these quickly. You know I'm a sucker for a censored cover. So here's the censored cover. This is Moon Tan. Yes, that is just an earring. This is one of those like, oh, damn, the cover got censored, so we got to make up this shit. What trash. <laughs> what, a bad what a bad cover this is. Uh, but that's because the original one looked like this. <laughs> so, uh, that's Moon Tan. <laughs> How about a new band with a classic old school feel? If you like uh, late seventies AOR, if you like Boston, if you like the Babies, if you like a little bit of Sticks, <laughs> a little bit of Sweet, um, this is for you here. This is a band called Cats in Space. That's right. Look at that cover. Yep. <laughs> Cats in Space. This is uh, the record called Kickstart the Sun. An incredible record. Again, a total throwback um, to, to how things used to be per se. And I don't know if anybody's going to show it. I mean, I know Jason showed Dark Side of the Moon. That's the obvious pick. Everybody loves Dark Side. We all love Dark Side. But I pulled, I think, a brilliant um, representation of not only Dark Side, but a lot of Pink Floyd hits from a great band. They came up <laughs> last week. Rob and I were talking about them. This is Government Mule doing Dark Side of the Mule. Um, love it. So them doing their... Uh, Pink Floyd stuff and doing an incredible job with it. If you don't know Government Mule, Warren Haynes and company who would go on to join uh, the Allman Brothers, but they could do a lot of different stuff and he can do whatever he damn wants to. Warren Haynes is just one of the most talented people out there. Uh, insane. So I'm all in on Dark Side of the Mule from Government Mule. But my real pick is I'm going to pimp out my channel a little bit. How would you know? And you know when I'm pimping out channels, I'm going to talk about coal mine records because I'm a piece <laughs> of garbage. So most importantly, this was the most recent uh, record released um, from the great Ghost Funk Orchestra on the Karma Chief record. This is A Trip to the Moon, a jazz funk space odyssey, an incredible record. I know Jason likes that Ghost Funk Orchestra. You might need to add to this one to the collection there, mon frere, as they say. Oh, and of course, last and not least, on my channel, if you know, I recently did an interview with uh, a gentleman named Louis Robert King, um, who is a composer, orchestrator, arranger, uh, and a member of a band called The Iron Sides, and this is their record called Changing Light, which actually so fits good. for this too. Uh, this is an instrumental, psychedelic, soulful, orchestrated record, um, and he was responsible for all of the composing, orchestrating, and arranging of all the strings and brass and orchestrated sections, and so it was super cool to sit down and um, chat with him for like an hour. Very cool experience for that. And for those watching, if you if you don't know, this was, I mean, I posted this video like a week ago, but all you have to do is leave a comment and I am going to give away this copy of it. So um, the first pressings, actually the first three pressings of the record sold out. So the coal mine exclusive sold out, the indie, indie record store exclusive sold out. And then this is the, um, <coughs> what do they call this? Cloak Clear. Let's show it. it. It doesn't count if you don't show the record, people. Um, this is actually pretty sexy. I can't lie. Come on. Yeah, man. yeah that's nice. Ooh. Very nice. Good stuff. So this will be, uh, this will be a giveaway for anybody who leaves a comment. I truly believe hundred percent. Everybody, if you like music, you deserve to have this record. Um, changing light from the iron sides. Incredible. Um, San Francisco soul instrumental, orchestral bliss so good so that is my last pick and last chance at pimping that ass thank you okay <coughs> i get two quick ones i mean this is too obvious so i'm not really gonna moon Very dance good. again morrison i mean what do you say moon dance uh then i was gonna show this <laughs> my favorite bands the Darkness. This is called Last of Our Kind. Uh, nice. Got some kind of a, an astronaut dude on the front. This album has nothing to do with astronauts or space by any means, but uh, that's what they chose for the cover. It is a uh, okay Darkness album. Not, I think this was their fourth, I believe. Um, not nearly as good as their first two, but better than some of their other stuff. So it's kind of like a middle of the road Darkness album. Love it. <clears throat> Do you know that album, Alex? 
I don't know that one. No, I really only know the I know only permission to land and uh, one way ticket. One way ticket. Yeah. yeah, I think then after that there was um, oh shit, Didn't there was the one that had the, that there was the one that had the lips on the front, and then I think there was this one. No, there was hot cakes was the third one. Then hot this cakes. one. Hot, 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 hot cakes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'm going to finish up with uh, no stream would be complete without me talking about the rodeo. Of course. <laughs> I thought of this last minute. This is uh, – so these guys uh, have been around 40 years. And I've always said the first half of their career is incredible and the last half is eh. – and this, I think, was in my mind, was their last great album. Came out in uh, like 2000. This was them doing their their sort of alt country thing, but being influenced by Stax Records. So they were on this album and the subsequent two where were backed by a full string section and a full horn section. This album, Palace of Gold, is is fantastic. This is actually the very rare U.S. release that has three bonus tracks on it. But uh, there's a song in here called Comet, which Greg Keeler wrote about the Hale Bop Comet, which uh, was discovered in the mid-'90s. Uh, and passed by Earth in 97, I think. Um, and it was visible to the naked eye for like six months. Uh, so Greg wrote a song about this. And uh, yeah, there you go. And inspired a cult, right? Yes, yeah. <laughs> no, that, that was the Heaven's Gate call, wasn't it? I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They thought the, the creator was aliens were coming in the spaceship to take them away. Or... It was all hiding in the tail of the comet, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, Just... yeah, that's right. That's yep. right. So, yep. That uh, concludes our space eclipse. Sun, moon, thematic, a highly intellectual discussion for this evening. Um, we'll go around the horn. Does anyone want to promote your channel? Tell folks what you did recently, what you got coming up, anything you want to talk about. We'll go around the horn. Alex, you're up first. Sure. Well, I uh, was just mentioning a recent interview on my channel, but that is all you got to do is leave a comment, and you are entered into a contest to win that record. So another great giveaway. Um, other than that recent video, some people might have seen is the uh, what we are colloquially calling the crossover event, uh, the DC <laughs> crossover event of the season. Um, recently was in Illinois, uh, on a trip and, um, met up with the great eight vinyl low. Some people might know her. She actually just posted a video, um, within like minutes ago, talking about the concert that we actually went to. Um, and we met up and did a, a stupid little video. That's like three minutes long where I chug a beer. So, um, <laughs> if you're into that sort of thing, go check it out. And, uh, you know, other than that, just, uh, keep on keeping on, you know, trying to figure out what to do next. That's it. Joe, what do you got? Anything cooking? Anything you put out recently? What's, what's uh, up? Well, I still got my vinyl fast five. The numbers drop daily, though. The, the people watching it, I'm not sure why, but uh, still trying to do that and keeping that going because there are some some folks that continue to watch, so I'll keep that up. And um, Yeah, I haven't done a whole bunch. I, I missed this week with, hey, I saw those guys live, but maybe Matthew Sweet will come up one of these times soon, and I'll have someone come on and talk about that show because I believe that's the show that you went to. Was it not? That is correct. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I uh, did have Alex on the week before and a couple of friends that are not uh, in the vinyl community. We talked about Peter Gabriel. So that's out there, which was, uh, which was a pretty good hour long interview that we did. And uh, yeah, other than that, same old stuff going on again, vinyl fast five and uh Hey, I saw those guys on Tuesday nights. I should be back next Tuesday. I do want to mention, I forgot, honorable mention to Blister in the Sun by the Violent Femmes. I was going to pull that one out, and I forgot to, but Blister in the Sun by the Violent Femmes. Good one. Yeah, nice job. I would ask Jason what he's done lately and what he's got in the works, but I know what the answer is. Nothing. You can just go, go right to that guy over there. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to do something, Jason? No. <laughs> at least he's honest though right yeah. you know? he's not gonna put you on he's got nothing to say <laughs> all right sam what about you um i'm gonna do a video about jason being a bum no um <laughs> uh no i just did a um a review late last night i got home i, I saw john oates from holland oats last night 
um, which was really a cool experience. I went in with hardly any expectations, came out a big fan. Um, obviously, I mean, I know the Hall Notes hits and that sort of thing, but I didn't really know John Oates's um, solo stuff. He did some great covers. He did all of his solo stuff. He did a couple of Hall and Oates tunes, um, a couple two hits, a few deep cuts. Um, so I talked all about that. Um, again, that was posted yesterday. Um, a couple of days before that, I added um, kind of a episode two in my series where I kind of break down just a favorite album of mine. Not necessarily an album that's been with me for a long time, but an album that I just really appreciate. I talked about the Avett Brothers album, I Am Loving You. Um, didn't really get a lot of traction on it. I wasn't expecting to, but if you know, if you like you know that kind of stuff, or if you just like hearing me talk about records, even if you're not interested, check that out. Um, and I did get a, I got a, a new box set today, um, an Elvis related box set that I might do a specific video about. I haven't decided yet. I listened to it today. It was really good. Um, so I might, I might kind of do a, a breakdown of that, but, um, yeah, like I said, concert review, I did that, that album breakdown and, um, yeah, that's about all I got. Heck yeah. I well, did a video, you? I did a video, uh, on Sunday as I always do about, um, it was that thread that, uh, Mike and MGK Boston started about stuff we listed when we were 12 or 13. So I did that. Um, I've got, uh, a large collaboration in the works that some of you know about, um, that we're planning. So I'll have to see what that's about when we get together in a few weeks to record that. And I got to get a, Sam and I still have to do a podcast episode. That's Alex and I are going to do one very shortly as soon as we could finish up our schedules so let me know sam whenever once i get my voice back in a few days whatever works for you <laughs> sam and then whatever works for you alex i gotta i gotta do a couple in the next couple of weeks so that's a sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you rob that's um, all go ahead for your, so another plug that i have so again i've talked about this every every week um we just finished our series on massey's main entertainment um we did our march madness bracket of best albums of the 70s he posted the last two in the last few days. Um, so the most recent one is obviously we did the final four and then we did our um, kind of finals all in one video. It's only like a 15, 20 minute video. Really, really fun with him, Rich Strickler, Randy Nelson, Doc um, and, and Brian Massey. Um, again, really, really a, fu a fun time. Uh, I shared it on my community page so you can go check that out if you don't know Brian, but subscribe to him. Um, that was a lot of fun to do. So we just finished that up and I know at some point later on, Rich Strickler and I are going to do a solo Beatles related album um, video ranking some some solo Beatles tunes. Um, I won't go into the de details of that. We've had some scheduling conflicts, but um, that will be up soon, um, probably within the next week or so um, once we get schedules and I'll post that on my page. But yeah, check out Massey's Man Entertainment for the conclusion of our 70s album bracket. So, Well... Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, Alex, Jason, Sam, and special guest, Racer Joe, for joining Thanks us for tonight. Me, Thanks, Joe. Anytime. Let me know. Always a pleasure, guys. We will be back next Wednesday. Uh, same bat time, same bat channel. So, Thank you, Rob. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Rob. Have a good we'll week. See you, everybody. See you, everybody. Bye. 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 Yeah.